websites in terms of watching our evening meetings. We still have the free internet you can, you can get on, and the negative of that is that it's a low bandwidth, and you get on, it's sometimes jerky in its motion, but we've spent a whole bunch of money to get a higher quality, better kind of stuff, and it's uh, full motion, it's like TV quality, and so if you're interested in that, there's an exhibit right by the, the Resource Center, and uh, you can sign up for that to be able to have access to not only the meetings in better quality, but all of the archives of our previous conferences. For example, if you wanted to hear Randy Clark speak, you just type in Randy, it'll give you every time he's ever preached at TACF, you can watch it, you can download it, you can take the, um, you know, just make your own libraries kind of thing. So that's, that's what that's all about. And let me just talk about ministry tonight real quick. If things go according to the plan that we're going to have to begin with, we are going to be having ministry in three different areas. We're going to have ministry underneath the flags, and so folks, you will need to stack your chairs and put them against the wall. We're going to be having ministry at the back, and those of you that are at the back, you're going to need to stack your chairs and put them against the walls. And we're going to be having ministry upstairs in the overflow area and on the balcony level. So here's what the plan would be. You folks in this section and this section, you folks would be underneath the flags. This section here, you'd go to the back and join those folks. And all of you in this section over here, these two sections, we'd have you folks go upstairs onto the balcony level and into the rooms upstairs. And the prayer team will be coming to you folks as well. Sandra. Okay, how many people have put stuff on hold in the bookstore? Put your hand up if you have stuff on hold. Anybody? If you have stuff on hold, you need to go to the bookstore now because Friday night is the, um, the time where they start putting the stuff back. So if you've got stuff on hold, you need to go to the bookstore now. And just so you know, at the end of the conference, you can go and you can order these DVDs and you can get a set. And I, I think I saw a price and I'm not quite sure. I thought it was like $85, but I, I'm not quite sure of the conference. And we just want mercy over me. Jeremy, Jeremy Sinnott um, and Connie, his beautiful wife. Wave, beautiful wife. Now, see, look. Isn't she beautiful? Woo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm up here, you're up here. <laughs> Anyways, um, get that CD. It's really good. And also, um, Todd Bentley, his, um, his book, um, Christ Healing Touch, Volume 1. There's a whole table in the bookstore, and I'm sure m- many of you have already been there, and all his stuff is there. And he's got all sorts of tapes, and this one is Encounters of the Kingdom Kind. So go to the bookstore if you're interested. Um, but if you have anything on hold in the bookstore, you need to go now and take it off hold, okay? All righty, everyone stand up, please. We're going to begin, but we need to invite the Holy Spirit. Grab someone's hand that's close to you. Find out who's taller. Tell the tall person to close their eyes. Put your hand on their shoulder. Say, Father, come and fill my friend up. Fill my friend up. Holy Spirit, come. Okay. Switch places. Pray for the other guy now. Holy Spirit, bless my friends. Fill them with your spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come. We welcome you to come. Folks, this is going to be a night of miracles. This is going to be a night of miracles. I believe that you're going to see spectacular healings tonight. I I think you're going to see the presence and the power of God. And it's going to be a night for you to have your boundaries expanded. So, Father, would you expand the boundaries? We welcome the Holy Spirit to set the atmosphere for all the things that the Father wants to do tonight. We welcome you here, Father. And Father, we're going to choose to worship you with all of our heart. We're going to give you our praise. We're going to tell you how wonderful you are because you are wonderful. So we bless you. Amen. Jeremy. Praise awaits you in this place today, O Lord. We are gathered ready, God's 
just sing your praise. Ready to respond to the glories of your name, to the wonders of your heart, to your great love.
Blessed are you in the midst of the congregation, O oh God. Tonight our desire is to run up to you. Jump into your lap and lean in. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. Yes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you.
tonight, Lord. I wanna see you. Signs and wonders. I wanna see you. No, I wanna see. See your kingdom come, your will be done. Let the kingdom of God come, let the kingdom of God come. So welcome here. So welcome to come and fill us. Not just a little bit, but to overflowing. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord. Come Lord, come Lord, come Holy Spirit, come Lord, come Lord, come Lord, come Holy Spirit, come, oh won't you come, come oh God, come oh God, come, oh come, oh come oh God. Better than we know ourselves. Pour in, Lord, come and pour in. Let there be healing virtue found tonight. Let faith rise up. Let the hearts of those who believe, oh, let them say yes. Let them say amen. Pour your healing virtue, oh Lord. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done.
love with you, Jesus. You want us. You swept us off our feet. heavens, oh God, cut open the sky and reveal your glory and your majesty. Let your physical presence come and transform creation, Lord God. Holiness, oh God, kingdom of light, kingdom of glory and power, manifest, crack open the sky, split open our soul and our physical being. Let the glory of God be manifest. Lord, receive praises, receive worship and adoration from all of creation. The trees clap their hands, the oceans roar, and the mountains skip like a calf. Lord God, nothing can remain still, nothing can remain quiet. The oceans roar, creation cries your praises in a thousand languages, Lord. Let your kingdom come, oh God.
He's a good father. of his loving kindness, because of his faithfulness. <laughs> There's a place where I love to run and play. There's a place where I sing new songs of praise. Dancing with my Father God in fields of grace. Dancing with my Father God in fields of grace. Dancing with my Father God in fields of grace. Where I love to run and play There's a place where I sing to the song to pray The desert with the Lord of God And feel the praise Father God, and 
Okay. Now, how many of you have never been with us before on a Friday night? Never been here before on a Friday night? Okay. You need to have a truer understanding of what the wave offering was in the Old Testament, the book of Leviticus. So sit down. Those of you in the front, just sit exactly where you are. And for those of you who have never been here before, in the Old Testament, they had a wave offering, and it goes something like this. At the back of the auditorium, when, uh, when the drums are ready, we'll give you a countdown, and we'd like you to jump to your feet, hand in the air, and shout out Jesus, and then we just bring the wave forward. This is exactly what the Levites did, I'm sure of it. I don't think it had anything to, to do with tossing grain or anything like that. I'm sure it was a wave. Does everyone understand what we're going to do? We're going to start at the back, come all the way up here. Mr. Drummer, are you ready for a drum roll? Already? On the count of three at the back, stand up, yell Jesus, and the rest of you follow suit. Ready? One, two, three, go! Yay! Whoa! Jesus! Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Oh. oh, that was a that was a good first try. That was a good first attempt. Sit down. We need to do it again. Oh, you can tell that it's really a good one when the bands start falling over. That's a good one. Are we ready, Jim? Okay. One, two, three, Jesus. Hey! Hey! Oh. oh, Father, you're wonderful. We bless you. Oh. Holy Spirit, welcome. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Oh, boy. Okay, that's, that's good enough. I'm, I'm done. Oh. Those of you in the front, you can head to your seats. Those of you on the Internet, I hope that you join in on that kind of stuff and just fall off your chair at your workplace or in your home. Oh. And uh, my in-laws, hello. Oh, we are going to have a great night tonight, folks. Uh, we're going to see God do some wonderful things. And uh, it is going to be real good. There is a, uh, a young man about 16 years of age. You were in Duncan Smith's workshop this afternoon. Your name's Joshua. Uh, is Joshua here or his parents? No, it's fine. Is Joshua here or his parents? You were in Duncan Smith's workshop this afternoon. Can you come on up? Do you mind coming up? Bring Joshua with you. Wonderful. And also Sandy that was in the soaking school from England. Where's Sandy from this? Okay, you come on up as well, Sandy. Oh, we'll start with these two. We've had some incredible healings that have taken place already this week and we're sort of like we got another day to go another night to go oh okay let's start with sandy sandy is from england she has been here in our soaking school which started monday tuesday finished wednesday and your husband's at home yes. and what happened what happened to your husband at home hi sweetheart oh well hopefully he's just fallen off the chair 
Um, my husband came, we've been coming for 10 years to Toronto, and my husband came to the Leader School of Ministry in July 2001, and ever since he went back home again, he's been ill, and he hasn't been able to travel to Toronto again. He went down with ME, and I've been traveling instead, and I've come three times in the last three, uh, I don't know, 14 months, something like that. I've received healing after healing after healing. My back has been made straight. Lumps have gone from my neck. And still my husband's not been healed. And on Wednesday night, I was told that my husband would be healed. And I've been telling people he's coming to the Glory Conference in faith. And this morning I phoned home and he's been keeping up on the internet so he can share with me what's going on. We can do this together. And he's been healed. <laughs> Wonderful. So he has, do you remember on Wednesday night? Or was it Wednesday night? Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. He got it last night. Okay, got it last night. Okay, because last night, guess what we were praying for? We were praying for fibromyalgia, um, ME, and all those kind of things. And so that's good, isn't it? Get another one, real quick. Yeah, a real quick healing. Another one. My, my daughter's boyfriend is not a believer, and he said to me, when you go to that funny place, come back with a healing for you and ask the big guy to heal my asthma. And last night, we asked him to take a deep breath, and he doesn't have asthma. He's got clear breathing. So watch out. <laughs> Very good. Okay, take a drink for yourself, Sandy. <laughs> She has straws for taking a drink. That's pretty good. Did you see what she had? She's got three straws for taking a drink. All righty. Now, this is Joshua, and this is Josh's mom. Um, so, mom, do you want to start off? What was, what was wrong with Joshua? He, had, uh, he was born with um, Down syndrome, and he had severe hearing loss, and the right ear was worse than the left. And just recently, within the last two months, he had his left ear healed. And then um, Duncan prayed for his right ear, and he took his hearing aid out and never put it back in. Praise God. Yay! So, Joshua, you know why they were, they were clapping? Do you know why they were clapping? I don't know. <laughs> because you can hear now. Is that right? Um, yeah. Yeah, you can hear. Is that right? Yep. So, what, did it, what happened when you, were, when you were prayed for? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Was it good? Um, yes. What? Yeah. <laughs> his, his sister was there I was told that Joshua was very very shy and uh, his, Jasmine you, you, you're a spokesperson are you just like all famous people and spokespersons yeah. oh well Joshua we are so excited that God did that for you because that is a great miracle isn't it to be able to not have your hearing it anymore you don't have to turn it up you don't have to turn it down is there anything else wrong with Joshua is, he, is that the, the big one just one. He was born with a heart defect also, and they're just monitoring that. And he has um, a leaky valve in his lungs. That fluid goes into, every time he drinks water, fluid goes into his lungs. And Duncan prayed for that also. Well, kind of, but he, he thought, he, he knew of the um, frequent bronchitis and infections. And um, weak angles and anything else. That kind of stuff. Okay. Well, Father, we ask that you would continue to finish off all that needs to go in Joshua, Father. In the name of Jesus, we bless your ankles, Joshua, to be strong. Bless you to be able to run with no problems. Bless your heart to have no difficulties in the name of Jesus. And every and all demonic assignments against this boy, we oh, pull them off. And they go to be with Jesus. And your healing comes. Holy Spirit, come. 
Ho. Now you just keep, you keep going there, Sandra. Uh, here's, Sandra and I went uh, home a little early last night, and we were, oops, there's someone down there. Uh, <laughs> we went home a little early last night because we knew that we were leading this morning, and we tried to, you know, just to have some time to hear from the Lord, and we're praying together and asking the Father what he wanted to do. And the first time the Father said, like, are you just coming to get, or are you coming to, because you're like me, and it's like, okay, sorry, we're here for you. Oh! And uh, after that, a few things came to us. One of the things that I felt the Holy Spirit saying to me was, find the worst person in the meeting tonight and do show and tell. And so we were praying and I really felt that there was, it was a, a lady that we were to minister to, that she'd be in a wheelchair. And this morning when we were doing the ministry, I was looking for her and she wasn't here, but I think I found her. And uh, that's Elizabeth. And uh, Elizabeth, do you want to, can someone sort of push her over here? Um, Ed, do you want to bring her over? Would that be all right? Uh, just interviewed her real quick, and as far as I know, I think she's the, the worst condition in the building. And so, you know, let's start with the worst, and then everything else gets easy. What do you think? Yeah. Oh! So, Elizabeth is from Wellington, Ontario, I found out. That's near Picton. And uh, do you want to sit, or are you going to be able to stand? What would you like to do? It's better to sit. Better to sit, okay. And Elizabeth, now the team that are going to help pray, you come on up. I've got some of the cell leaders from TACF to come. So, Elizabeth, what, what's the problem that you have? I'm full of cancer, and I have a bad heart. 1981, they gave me five years to live, and the Lord has kept me till this time for a testimony. Okay. And the cancer is, as you're saying, everywhere in your body? I have a tumor around my esophagus. I have a tumor in my stomach. And I'm full of bone cancer. Right. And one of the things that Sandra had felt last night was, well, you tell him, Sandra, what were you feeling? When Stephen um, said, you know, I got a picture of somebody um, in a wheelchair that we were going to pray for, instantly I got a picture of bone. But I didn't know what it was. And so I just said, well, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do? And, and you know what? I just saw white bone nothing on it, clean and pure. So we just want to declare right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you would come, Father. Whoa! You would come, Lord, and you would just take away all the gunk on her bones, Father. We just speak to them and we just say you, you are clean because of what Jesus did on the cross for you. He died on the cross for your sins and for your pain. And so, Father, we just ask right now that you would just come and take away all the the cancer, Lord. Lord, I pray right now that you would just come and strengthen her heart, Lord. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that today that she is a living miracle. She is a sign and wonder. And Father, you get all the glory. You get all the praise, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that she can stand now because of what you did on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa! Thank you, Jesus. She stands because of what you did on the cross, Jesus. And Lord, we just proclaim that, that, that your daughter is healed, completely healed right now. So Father, come. Come and pour strength, strength and healing into her legs right now, Father, where they've gotten weak, Lord. We just pray right now for strength, whoa, and healing. Just come, Father. Come, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. All about you. All about you. Holy Spirit, come. Elizabeth, from the top of your head all the way down, the Holy Spirit comes on you. His anointing comes on you. Nothing, oh, can stand in the way of the Holy Spirit. Every sickness bows before the Holy Spirit. Every disease bows before the Holy Spirit. We command every bit of pain to leave your body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Who? Oh. Oh. The reason I've asked these cell leaders is because they're all good at ministering healing and they're all good at seeing in the spirit. And that's one of the things that we're trying to do as a church is to see what's going on in the supernatural. Ooh, Holy Spirit come. 
Holy Spirit, come. Father, we come against demonic spirits that have been holding her captive. We command the spirit of cancer to leave her body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. It goes to the cross. 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 Ooh, lift those things off. Command every tumor in her body to shrink in the name of Jesus. To shrink in the name of Jesus. Ooh. Help. Wow. We invite Jesus, the man of fire, to just to come in and just burn this cancer out of her body right now in Jesus name and we command every tumor to dry up right now in Jesus name whoa and we just command every spirit of infirmity to leave her now and to lose her in Jesus name whoa Um, yeah, I just saw that the, the Lord wants to come and with fire burn literally through every bone and that with that it will shrivel up and then I saw life come and it was like ready pinky color. So Lord, we pray that you will come as a man of fire and burn through her right now in Jesus' name. We call on the fire of God to burn right through and burn up every infirmity, every cancer, go in Jesus' name. Oh, water retention, go. Cancer, go in Jesus' name. Yeah. Out it comes, 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 out it comes. Now, Elizabeth, how are you feeling? Have you sensed anything different? I just feel the Holy Spirit going through me. And tonight, the Lord said, tonight's my night. Now, how's your, how's your body? Do you have pain in your body right now? In my knees. Okay. Anywhere else in your body? No. Okay. Holy, yeah, is, that, is that better than it was before? I've been able to stand longer than I have before. Wow. That's good. <laughs> Father, into her knees, we speak strength right now. Yes. Holy Spirit comes into her knees, into her knees. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. It's, a, it's an exchange when you're praying for people. You're praying for the bad stuff out, the good stuff in. And in one sense, it's relatively simple like that. Now, Elizabeth, can we go for a little walk? It's just, if you're feeling you need to stop, just let me know. How? Lord, if he heals me, I'm going to run all around this room.
Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Elizabeth? There's still a few more things going on, so we're just working on those as well. Who? Oh. Who? Oh. Elizabeth, when was the last time you took a walk like that? I can't remember. Like two years ago, three years ago? <laughs> no. I was in a power wheelchair for five years, and uh, I was watching the Miracle Channel, and one of the people on there said, there's a girl named Elizabeth. She's going to come out of that wheelchair. And two weeks later, I was out of the wheelchair. And uh, it's been a gradual healing since then. Wow. Thank God. Well, Holy Spirit, just keep going. So these guys are just going to keep going with her. But I would like everyone who has any kind of pain, any kind of sickness, you just stand up, folks. Are we ready? Who? Okay, those of you that are seated, uh, grab, not grab someone, that's not the right word. Put, put, your hand, put your hand on someone who's standing beside you. Before you do that, look at your hands. What's on your hands, folks? The anointing of the Holy Spirit is with you. If you are a follower of Jesus, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is with you. Put your hand on the person beside you, on their shoulder, or grab their hand. Ask them... Take five seconds to ask them what the problem is. What's the problem? Arthritis, kidneys, heart, deafness. Who? Okay, that's long enough. Let's minister to these people right now. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come and begin to take every single sickness and pain out of these people. Jesus has already died for all of these infirmities. He's already paid the price. Holy Spirit, come, just take, these, take them all to the pit of hell and leave them there. And Father, we speak into their bodies, release from every assignment of the enemy, every demonic spirit that's against these people, that's ruling in their bodies, we cancel that in the name of Jesus Christ because the name of Jesus is better than any spirit. We say go right now in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, we command pain to leave the bodies, to leave their bodies, to leave their bodies, to leave their bodies, to leave their bodies. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Who? Who? Every demonic spirit that causes sickness and pain. In the ministry of Jesus, about a third of the stories, it's demonic spirits that were behind the things. Probably was more, but that's what the writers specifically said, about a third. Luke, in his gospel, Luke was a medical doctor. And in his gospel, over half of the healings, Luke identified as specifically a demonic spirit that was causing the problem. So, Father, we command those spirits to go. These people have been bought with a price. Jesus dying. Jesus being whipped and beaten. Ooh. Folks, when Jesus died on the cross, your sins were dealt with. When Jesus was beaten, when Jesus was whipped, why did that have to take place? That had to take place for your healing. It had to take place for your healing. Prophetic words 800, 600 years previous by Isaiah talked about the scourging that he would get and that healing would come because of the passion of Jesus. All that he endured as the pain came, as every organ in his body went into shock and began to die as every part of every inch of his body would have had whiplashes and beatings 
every part of his body would have been touched by those whips, representing the pain, the suffering that you do not need to carry anymore. And we command that to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Command it to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Who? Now, folks, I'd like you to check yourself right now. Begin to move around. Is there less pain? How do you feel? If you had pain in your knees, begin to move them up and down. If you couldn't swivel your hips, begin to move them. Holy Spirit, come. Who, who's feeling the anointing of the Holy Spirit on them? Wave your hands. Who? Who? Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Who? Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Oh. Folks, let me, all of you that were standing for healing, Bill mentioned it this morning, but in the scriptures there are, there are some very specific things that stop healing from taking place, and one of them that Bill talked about was forgiveness. You know, Jesus really didn't teach a lot of how to do ministry. You had to see, you have to look in the scriptures to see what he did, but he really didn't do a lot of teaching. James is about the only one who talks about it, and really he's only got a couple verses. But one of the things that he talked about is hearing the confession, and he talks about sin needing to be dealt with. He talked about forgiveness, and forgiveness is a big one. And I'd like those of you that still have pain, or still feel that you've got the problem, it hasn't gone yet, I would like you to just close your eyes and ask the Holy Spirit this one question, who do I need to forgive? Just close your eyes and ask the Holy Spirit, who do I need to forgive? Who do I need to forgive? And if the Holy Spirit brings someone to mind, don't fight it. That's what we've just asked the Holy Spirit to reveal. Don't say, well, I've already forgiven that person. You may have forgiven him 20, 30 times, but there's still more that needs to be done in the opinion of the Holy Spirit. Let me lead you in a prayer. Father, I forgive, and then you name the person's name. Say it out loud. I forgive, say their name. Now tell the Lord what they did. Tell the Lord what they did. Oh. Tell the Lord what they did. Now give them a gift that they may not deserve and say, I forgive them. I forgive this person, my mother, my father, my friend, my, my ex-spouse, my kids, my boss, my pastor. I forgive them. I give them a gift that they don't deserve. I release them. I choose not to be the judge and jury. I give them to you, Father. And Holy Spirit, I welcome you to come and touch their bodies right now. Everything in this room that's connected to unforgiveness, we ask it to lift off in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. 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 Who? As we were ministering, I'd like those of you who were being ministered to, if you were sensing and feeling the Holy Spirit on you, can you just wave your hand, the ones we were ministering to? Now, folks, look around the room. Just see how many people's hands are waving. These are pe not, these, we're not saying these people were healed. These are people who are feeling the Holy Spirit on them. Holy Spirit, just do more. Just do more. Oh, well, folks, that was the appetizer. We are going to do more later. Uh, Todd Bentley from British Columbia is our guest speaker tonight, and this guy, uh, the Holy Spirit gives him a lot of insight, and he's able to, to really flow in a healing anointing and, so, and miracles, and so we're going to let Todd have a good run at you as well tonight. Um, John, do you want to do the missions? Right.
Okay, we're, um, we talked last night about a missions offering. And how many remember me saying that? Okay. How many fasted a meal and said, I'm going to do it? All right. We have a couple of uh, video clips that I want to show you. Um, the first one is Bill Prankert's. If you guys could get ready to show that about the Arctic Russia. Bill has, uh, has left the conference now. He couldn't stay tonight. He had other meetings this weekend. But he does an amazing work with the Eskimo people, not only in northern Canada, but now to the ends of the earth, way over in Arctic Russia. Let's just go ahead and show that little clip there, if we could, guys. And the next one will be um, Nigeria, which is... Um, an international school where we go and equip pastors and we find it's just so very, very effective. And then I'm going to ask Todd to come up and give about two minutes on what he's doing out in Africa, if that's okay. Are we set? Go ahead. The people of Arctic Russia have been on the hearts of Bill and Gwen Prankard for many years. The distance, danger and cost has not stopped them from taking the gospel to one of the most harsh environments in the world. Starting in the far east of Arctic Russia, they saw God move in an amazing way in the isolated villages of Chukotka. Then moving to the west of the Ural Mountains, they began traveling out on the tundra to the Nenets, the last nomadic Eskimos who still live in reindeer skin tents as they follow the herds across this frozen wasteland. Last year, Bill and Gwen experienced the favor of God as they traveled up the Ob River and saw God move in both the villages and the tents. Mayors welcomed them and their message and begged Bill and Gwen to return to plant churches in their communities. In the village of Beliersk, they were actually able to purchase a building and a property right next to the mayor's office for a future church. The most recent trip to Arctic Russia brought Bill and Gwen back to Uskara, a tiny village on the edge of the Arctic Ocean. This humanitarian mission, which transported seven tons of food and supplies to the people of Uskara, reaffirmed the desperate situation in Siberia and the urgency of reaching these isolated communities with God's love. This summer, Bill and Gwen will return to the Verkuta area and spend the first part of the mission mentoring and pouring into the lives of their Russian workers and enlisting new dedicated Christians who live in this region to help with the overwhelming task of discipling the new believers on the tundra. The Ukraine will be their next stop this fall to share the vision with thousands of Russian-speaking believers as they mentor and teach at the Salt and Light Conference. Much has already been accomplished, yet as the message spreads across the Arctic, so do the needs. Churches must be established and pastors must be put in place to truly reach all the people at the ends of the earth. Thank you for caring enough and sharing with us. And we've only just begun. The overwhelming challenge at hand is that this community needs a church with a full-time pastor. And then you look across the top. Last night I sat in the home of one of the families here and had tea with them. And we looked at the map of Russia and I asked them about the different people groups across the top of Russia. And they just go from one to another to another. Most of them that still have not heard about Jesus. There are still thousands of people in the one million square miles of Russian tundra that have not been reached with the gospel, and time is running out. You can be a part of this vital mission.
Okay, that's what Bill and Gwen are doing, Arctic Russia. <clears throat> and TACF and our Catch the Fire team will be going to Nigeria once again. I want to show you the clip of the ministry that went on there, so just put that on, guys, if you would. And think about this. You're going to be sowing into this amazing soil of multiplying blessing from the ends of the earth right over to Nigeria. And then, Todd, if you'd come up and just share briefly about what you're going to be doing there. Are we ready? Go ahead, Sasha. I don't think that's the one. Oh, it is? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, and also the third part of this mission offering is going to Todd and his outreach to uh, where he goes in these crusades to Africa and India and other places. So just give us a little update on it, Todd. We're going to be going into Burundi, Africa in January. And uh, Burundi is right there with Rwanda and Congo, the uh, Republic of Congo. And for those of you that have been hearing any of the stories on the news has been tremendous genocide and it's even going on right now in the Sudan and it's really all going on in that region and uh, in Burundi they've had over pretty close to 300,000 deaths since the late 70s and they're in civil war right now in fact you can still hear at night tracer fire going over the city and machine guns and it's really a war zone um, just a month ago they went into a refugee camp burnt it down and slaughtered all the children and raped the women. And uh, 500,000 of them had to escape Burundi to go live in, in um, uh, Republic of Congo. They have bases in Tanzania and bases in Congo where guerrillas are operating and they're going into Burundi. Even right now, it's, it's actually intensified recently, even this year. And uh, there's about 
um, a thousand pygmy children. How many of you know the pygmies live in Burundi? Little tiny people, the pygmies, real tribal people in Africa. If they don't get placed in school, they will be slaughtered. They, have a, they, they, they face being slaughtered in the refugee camps if they can't get placed in school. We're working with Ralph and Donna Bromley and, and Hope for the Nations in Kelowna, and we want to place a thousand children for $15,000, a thousand children into school for one year and get the children out of the refugee camps. We're doing a massive feeding, and we're taking five children's homes, and we're putting it together in one base and building um, a big center to house, I don't know, a hundred children or more right now um, in Burundi. Tremendous opportunity to show the love and the power of the gospel. We're going in. We want to take a team of 40 men and women. We're going to do a massive crusade, but it's not good enough to go in and show God's power in crusades and miracles if you can't go in and help the children. And uh, we want to bring about a million dollars in relief as far as food. And we have that already that we'll be able to send into Burundi. So that's uh, what we're doing in Africa right now. Oh, thank you, Todd. <clears throat> so this offering is a third to the unreached tribes in the north of Russia, a third to training and releasing leaders and releasing the fire of God and teaching Africans how to soak and everything else. And then what Todd is doing for these children and the refugee camps and everything. So we'll divide it a third, a third, a third. So I want us to bow in prayer right now. And ask God what he would have us do. Lord Jesus, we are so blessed in this land. We, we thank you for the way that you feed us and that you clothe us and that you look after us. And Lord, your abundance is great. It's upon us. And there are so many, even believers, who have nothing. And God, we want to minister to them. We want to reach out in the name of Jesus and sow into them. And so, Lord, 100% of this offering goes into these mission projects and mission ventures. And we ask you to multiply it, Lord. We sow the seed into good soil, and we ask you to multiply it in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord will speak to you and tell you what to do. Can I have our ushers come forward at this time? There, um, there are envelopes there if you're giving... A if you're giving by cash or you're giving by visa, please take one of the envelopes. You'll need to fill out your visa number and name and signature and expiry date and sign it and all that stuff. But I think you know how to do that. How are we doing down there with Catherine, Sandra? Elizabeth, rather. Give us an update, Steve. Uh, remember when Bill was talking about this morning a few different things that you need to work through? That's what we're doing right now. So we're going click, click, click. They're all going off the list. Oh, she doesn't have uh, any more pain in her knees when we were walking up here. She, she, she's... Um, anyways, that's gone. There's just a little bit of pain still in her back that uh, Rudy's looking after. And I think, I we told her this is a spiritual Walmart. You can do all your shopping in one place. So. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll get an update after we receive the offering. And uh, go ahead, guys, and pass the offering baskets. Jeremy, lead us in one more song. That would be great.
just but look to the cross you are the Lord and for our inheritance give us the loss you Great. Give the Lord a big shout of praise tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Elizabeth, just give us a little update. How are you doing? I'm feeling better. <laughs> You've done a lot of crying. Yes. A lot of burdens is lifted off. What did the Lord speak to you about? He said, I am his delight. <laughs> he said he wanted to fill me with his love. Yeah. So I never had real love before. I was always abused yeah. and used. But now you've got it. And now I have Jesus' love. <laughs> Good. Well, we're, we're going to still, there's, you know, a few more things to unravel here. So we're, we're almost to the bottom here, I think, Elizabeth. So, Father, would you keep coming? Yep. How, how are your knees doing? Is there, is there still a little bit of pain or no pain or what? If I stand very long, then the pain comes back in my knees. Okay. When you're standing real long. Yeah. And how's your back doing now? There's still a bit of pain in the middle of my back where the scoliosis is. Oh, we didn't break that one. Okay, we didn't hear about scoliosis yet, so we'll get that one now. <laughs> we just keep asking more questions. The Holy Spirit says, ask this, ask this, and you get to the bottom of it. So we're going to keep going here. All righty, every pastor, stand up, please. Pastor, full-time pastor, full-time missionary, full-time evangelist, full-time that kind of stuff, like you make your bread and butter from doing this, looking after people, ministering to people, great. Okay, run to the front, those of you standing, no one else gets to stand. 
Run up here. School of Ministry, can you come and have Adam? So you're going to just, you're going to need to get in, um, in a couple lines if that's okay. If you can get in, um, you know what, there's not going to be room for two lines. So just bunch right up. Move right up, folks. Move right up. And uh, ministry team and school of ministry, you're going to have to just weigh your way in there. They're not going to be able to fall because there's too many of them. So just prayer team and ministry and school of ministry. Let's stretch our hands towards these, these leaders, men and women. Holy Spirit, would you come? We ask for an incredible anointing and impartation into these men and women. Father, we bless their hands. We bless the ministries that they represent. Bless the people that they represent. Father, I pray that the things that the Holy Spirit is speaking to them about this week, the things that the Holy Spirit whispers to them, the things that they see, the things that they're learning, Father, would they be able to impact in their communities, in their cities, in their nations? Holy Spirit, we welcome you to do great great things through them. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. The prayer team, just sort of work your way in and go at them. Father, increase the anointing in these men and women. Increase the anointing, Father. The healing, signs, wonders, all the stuff, all the stuff, all the stuff that Jesus did. Everything Jesus did, you can do better. By the way, folks, right in front of me, the man I'm holding his hand is Charles Carr, one of our speakers. It's his 74th birthday today. We had, uh, we had some cake in the speaker's room, had a chance to prophesy over him and bless him. He's 74 and he wants to live to 100 active. So, Father, we bless Charles. Go where few men have gone before. Ministering right up with full strength and full power and full anointing. Ooh, in Jesus' name. Ooh. Whereabouts is Todd? <laughs> is he able to make his way through the crowd? Ooh, we'll part the waters for Todd here. If you've never heard Todd speak, he's been here a number of times. Todd is 26, 27, 28 years of age, young Canadian. And if you've not heard his testimony, he was addicted to, to drugs, to alcohol. Holy Spirit came on him, saved him. He was illiterate, able to read the Bible instantly. And within months, the, the Holy Spirit launched him on a healing ministry. Uh, he's gone around the world, seen hundreds. He was just telling us, uh, that in what nation was it where you had the deaf and dumb spirit? Oh, we saw over 200 deaf and dumb, then we stopped counting. after. 200. Over 200 deaf and dumb people were healed in one meeting, then they stopped counting. That's the kind of stuff that he gets to do. Ooh. And he's an imparter as well. And so... Father, we bless Todd as he imparts to us tonight. Father, may there be new wisdom, new revelation, and fresh anointing on this brother as he shares tonight, Father. In Jesus' name. Woo! Amen. Amen. Man, it's always so rich when we're here. And I just love all the ministry that goes on here in Toronto. Because it really isn't about who's on the platform. It's about what Jesus is doing. It really is. You know, I mean, we, 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 we thank God and we honor a different ministry, but there's really a model here that, hey, this anointing is for you. It's tangible. It's transferable. And I'll tell you, we're going to do a couple things tonight. And then tomorrow morning, the Lord wants me to have a, an impartation service. So, so we're going to have an anointing service tomorrow morning, and I'm going to lay hands on everybody in the building. We're, gonna, we're just going to have fun. You know, um, listen, amazing things happen when we lay hands on people. 
I, I was praying for a, a, a friend of mine in ministry. His name is Cheon, Harvest Rock down in California. And uh, I had been teaching on how to activate your spiritual senses. And uh, when I laid hands on him, immediately he fell into the power and an angel came, took him to heaven. And since that time, several times, the angel has now come and takes him into heaven where he, he visits in the spirit the meetings before he gets there. So I, really, there's, there's value in impartation. See, environment, influence, and association. God told me six years ago, he said, lay hands on as many people as you can, and as you freely receive, Todd, pray that that same grace comes upon anybody that you pray for in the nations. And so we're going to do that tomorrow morning. We're going to have a, an impartation service. I know there's already all kinds of impartation. It's going on right now. Pastors and leaders are being filled up right now. God's pouring it out. But I thought, you know, we'd really have to be hungry to be here Saturday in the morning for impartation. And I, I got a flight to catch to go back to where we live. But, you know, I'm going to lay hands on everybody tomorrow morning. And uh, we're going to have a fresh oil meeting. And I, I'm going to believe that when we lay hands on people, you know, I just talked to Charles, Karen. And uh, he said, was it your daughter, Charles? She was in one of my meetings in Atlanta uh, several years ago. And she said, you know what, Dad? Ever since I was in that service that Todd did in Atlanta, visions and words of knowledge have now been coming easier for me two, three years later still. You see, impartation, this is transferable. This is tangible. And, uh, you know, I was in a meeting in the Bronx, New York last week, and God said, Todd, in every meeting that you go into from this day forward, I'm going to give at least to one man or one woman the same mantle that I placed on your life for stadiums and masses and nations. He said, everywhere you go, I want you to believe me for at least one. I might lay hands on 10,000, but I'm praying in every single meeting. Listen, there was a meeting that Amy Semple McPherson was in when God called her. There was a meeting that Benny Hinn had went to, and he had been outside of that meeting. The anointing of God got a hold of him. There was a meeting. He remembers the day. Listen, I remember the day that God touched me. I could tell you the day it happened. And I feel like God's going to begin to release a greater, it's going to become even more important in the next couple of years, this whole thing about impartation and how it works. And people are going to get it a whole lot more. Listen, I've completed, I think, four or five fasts already this year. And uh, the reason is to pray that God would release a greater grace for us to give it away. A greater grace for men and women to catch the anointing of what God's doing. Hallelujah. In your own package. Isn't that the best part? We don't have to look alike, sound alike. We took 700 people. By the end of this year, we'll have taken 700 people with us to the nations. 700. Some of them are as young as 12, 13 years old. Some of them are as old as 84 years old. You know, next year I'd like to take 1,500 or 2,000 with me to Africa, to India, to the Ukraine, to Mexico, to Eastern Europe, uh, to, you know, we're doing a, a special trip right now in Peru where I'm, I'm getting a boat and taking 50 with me up the Amazon River and we're stopping every night in a village, in a remote village and ministering to, to some of the tribal people living in the vi village that you can only get to by going up the Amazon River. Listen, we'll pray for dead people in the villages. We'll pray for dying people in the villages. I mean, this will be real ministry in the villages of Peru and minister to some of the Incan Indians and some of the people that, that are, are, are um, tribal in, in Peru. But that's the kind of stuff we're doing. And we want to take as many people as we can and expose them to the power of God working in and through them in miracle signs and wonders. Now listen, we talked about Burundi. Maybe God touched your heart. Who has something in their heart for Africa? Really? A love, a passion for Africa. You know, it's amazing. Most missionaries go, God, don't send me to Africa. You know, you know don't send me. If, if that's what you prayed, maybe you should go to Africa. You know, and in 2005, we're going to work with Heidi Baker, and we're taking 100 to Mozambique, and we have a massive feeding program and medicine for the AIDS baby homes, and we're doing, a, you know, these humanitarian outreaches and feeding programs with the crusades that we're doing in Africa. But you know what? We need help right now in Burundi. And we're not talking about money. We need men and women that have it in their heart right now that want to serve 
in touching nations in Africa with the gospel. That want to pray for blind, deaf, and cripple. That want to get involved in the ministry of Jesus and, 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 and get out into the marketplace and have open air, spontaneous gatherings in the marketplace. Men and women that really have it in their heart to go into hospitals and orphanages and prisons with the power of God. That have it in their heart to want to touch and bless children. That have it in their heart to want to feed the hungry. Listen, so we're going to go into Burundi in the end of January for a massive crusade in the capital city. And we're going to visit, you know, some of our team are going to go to where we're building this home for the orphans. And we're working to get food into the country. But listen, we want to bring 40 men and women with us. And most people don't want to go to Burundi. You know, Mozambique, Uganda, Tanzania, let's go on a safari in a minute. But you tell them you're going into like that same spirit that was in Rwanda. And you hear about the stuff going on in the Sudan. And, you know, that, that there's people being slaughtered. And people usually don't want to go. Listen, we'll be safe. We'll take good care of you. Better yet, there'll be more of the glory of God in those kind of conditions in Africa. So listen, I'm putting it out there right now and saying, come change the world with us. If you're one of those people that are just ready to go, here I am, Lord, send me. And you'd love to come and get a little bit up close and personal with our ministry. Listen, we'll do impartation. We'll lay hands on you. You'll go out into the crowds every night and pray for thousands. We could have 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 people a night in the crusades. These are massive crusades that we're doing in in these countries in Africa, and we want to bring men and women with us. So I asked John, I said, John, you know, can I just put it out there right now? If, if there may be just 10 people in this meeting that are saying, you know what, Todd, I'll go. I'm in. Here I am. I send me. And listen, the door is only open to the end of this month. I've got to close the door at the end of November, November the 31st. So if it's something that you have in your heart, if you want more information, what does it cost? What's involved? When are we going? Blah, 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 blah. Listen, come this Monday or Tuesday or, you know, fire your computer up in your hotel tonight, wireless, whatever, you know. Go on to our website, freshfire.ca, Fresh Fire Ministries, freshfire.ca, and click the missions page. Get the information on Burundi. Send a little email and say, what's involved? I want to go. Or, you know, put a phone call into our ministry in the next week. And say, listen, I want to get in on this trip to Burundi. So I'm looking for laborers. I'm praying for laborers right now that will serve with us in Burundi, Africa. So consider that. And uh, in 2005, we have about 12 other international trips. And we'll be in, like I said, the Ukraine, Mozambique. How about India in the month of March? We're going back into India. Listen, India is open right now. We have favor in India to bring the gospel. You know, we're expecting up to half a million people reached in five days in India. We've got a massive field that can accommodate a quarter million a night, over 200,000 a night. And we're asking for half a million souls in March in India. Hindus, Muslims, we're going to show the power of God. Last time I was there, that's where we had 200 deaf mutes get healed. We stopped counting. And listen... We're going to go up to Hyderabad, and we have a pastor's conference for three to 5,000 pastors. So for those of you that are pastors laying around in the glory right now, that's the trip that we want to see mostly leaders and pastors come on. It's the trip we're taking to India. But great opportunities to get involved in the mission field. Amen. How, I want to pray for those of you that are feeling the call to the nations. I want you to stand up. What's that? Okay, yeah, some of these people that have received prayer already, they're just saying we can clear you out. You can go back to your seats, crawl back. You know, if you've received prayer and you can crawl back, you can do that. If you have it in your heart, maybe Africa or India or somewhere else, you know, I, great friends of mine take trips, Randy Clark, and I know that teams go out from Toronto, and lots of people have been down with Heidi, and we bless all that. It's a huge, it's a move of God. We're in the river. There's a lots of cross-pollination. But, uh, you know, if, if God's put it in your heart, consider we got mission trips all 2005. The first one of the year is January. We're going to Burundi. And so if you got it in your heart, I'm going to pray for God to assign angels to cause supernatural intervention of great wealth to come into your life so you can go to the nations. How about that? <laughs> 
Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that heaven would release and assign angels to men and women in this room that are asking for divine supernatural intervention of resources to go to the nations, to feed the hungry, to build homes for children. God, I'm praying for laborers tonight in Toronto again. Come change the world with us. We're praying for laborers to be thrust out into the harvest fields right now in the name of Jesus. So anoint them, touch them, empower them, and release the supernatural provision of heaven for those that are saying, Here am I, Lord, send me. Boomba shabarabanda. Bam! Take that anointing. Take that anointing in Jesus' name. It's harvest time. You could be seated. This place is wild tonight. It's wild tonight. <laughs> you know, a big part of what's been happening in the meetings we've been doing over the last couple years. It's just been a real emphasis on open heavens. And uh, seeing in the invisible realm. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. Even encounters where, you know, quite frequently for myself, I'll be caught up, you know, into the third heaven and all other kinds of Stuff that goes on in the seer realm. You know, God did promise a day in which He would pour the Spirit on all flesh. All flesh. Say all flesh. And what happens? They prophesy. Who prophesies? All flesh. Okay? What kind of prophecy? All young men have visions. All old men have dreams. Now, some of us hear the voice of God. We have flowing thoughts. We give a prophetic word. But there's a whole new thing happening where the eyes of our heart are being enlightened and we're getting prophetic encounters and prophetic experiences in unprecedented ways and people are being taken into the heavens, even being translated in the Spirit. I was last night right here, translated in the Spirit. I was in three different countries. I'm going to share some things tonight about that. I feel like some of the testimonies that I'm going to share tonight are actually going to open up a door for many of us to receive an invitation into a realm of the Spirit we've never been before. How many of you like that? An invitation through the testimony, an invitation through the testimony into doors and realms in the Spirit we've never been before. Because in every testimony is the Spirit of Prophecy. And there's something that happens in the realm of the Spirit as we hear testimonies of the supernatural kingdom breaking in. Quite often, people even are, are caught up into encounters with the Lord as they hear testimonies of supernatural visitation. I want you to expect that. God really is releasing the seer anointing in a greater dimension. And I, I've, I've done a couple of new resources and this is probably one of the most important CD sets I've put together that I can think of. And not just the nature of the revelation, but the message. How to make decrees of justice out of that realm in heaven called the heavenly courts. The heavenly courts and divine counsel, divine judgment and justice. I was in Kansas City, a part of a prophetic round table. And I was actually caught up, and it's happened several times, that I stood in the Lord's council before his court and saw the members of the council room in heaven and how it works. And how even as human beings in the flesh on the earth, there at times is an invitation and a door open in which we can be taken up into that place in heaven, and then we begin to make decrees. So, powerful teaching on, on decrees of justice, the heavenly courts, who's a member of the divine council, and, and we, we deal with talking about um, all the throne room encounters in the Bible. We break them down one by one. And over 66 scriptures on the throne room. So 
Lots of great stuff in here, including we talk about the living creatures, the throne that's on wheels, how the throne moves, uh, the activity of what goes on at the throne. It's taken out of the Word of God and uh, some great teaching, probably some of the best teaching I've done on how to bring about God's justment, justice through making decrees out of what you see in heaven. So uh, I'm going to throw this one out there. Who wants this? This girl. Yeah, I'm going to give that to you. And... Uh, I've done this other new series here called Encounters of the Kingdom Kind. You know, I thought, wow, you know, let's have that. Encounters of the Kingdom Kind. And what we deal with here is uh, the, uh, the seven spirits of God, a whole teaching on the function, the operation of the seven spirits of God, who they are. We deal with uh, the kingdom of God, how to preach the gospel, bring the kingdom in with miracle signs and wonders. Uh, and uh, lots of other great stuff in here on the throne. I actually break down Revelations 4 verse by verse. And I share throne room encounters. Uh, and uh, we teach on having encounters with the kingdom. Kingdom mindsets. Uh, where is the kingdom? Uh, and how to access the throne and stuff like that. So encounters of the kingdom kind. My brother right here. You want that? There you go. Take that. So I sold out of my new school. People have been asking, I have a new school called the School of the Supernatural Realms of Heaven. It's 22 hours of teaching with a student manual, all teaching on third heaven and the seer anointing and trances and dreams and visions and angelic hosts and spirit of wisdom. And You know, we don't have any left, uh, but uh, oh well, we're hungry, aren't we? I, I tell you, the people that are here are hungry. I haven't been able to get away from any of the staff and leaders without, Todd, pray for me. They're just so hungry. I can't even hang out in the hospitality room without doing some kind of ministry. It's great. I love it. But, uh, hey, Christ's Healing Touch. I've done a new book, Christ Healing Touch, Understanding How to Take God's Healing Power to the World. And uh, we deal with here, the first chapter is how I came into the healing ministry. How I developed the gift of healing. How the healing angel operates in our meetings. All the behind the scenes stuff you'd want to ask in the restaurant as far as questions about how it works, the word of knowledge, all that stuff. And then I've got teaching in here on raising the dead, 30 reasons why miracles happen, creative miracles, dunamis power, the coming healing revival, um, the word of knowledge. I deal extensively with the word of knowledge, how to push for details in the word of knowledge. Uh, the seven redemptive names of God, some of the theology of healing. This is only volume one. I've got two volumes on the healing ministry. Over 700 pages of teaching and revelation on the healing ministry. So anyways, uh, who really has it in their heart? A young guy right now, or a young lady. right? Here. How about that lady in the red? You want to do healing around the world and miracles and crusades, the whole thing? Here you go. Ready? There you go. God bless you. There we go. All right. Hey, let's, let's mess around a little bit. <laughs> Listen, there is a realm of the spirit coming tonight. <laughs> a realm of the spirit coming tonight. On the day of atonement, the Lord visited me in a profound way for the coming year, 2005. And here's how it started. I heard vroom, 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 and wheels screeching in the spirit. And all of a sudden, I saw, like a, it was, a, you know, like an Indy 500 car or something like that, came, came squealing in before me, and it was the Lord. It was the Lord. Smoke. The wheels were squealing. And he, and he came in before me in this, this vehicle. And he got out almost like a, a dressed in a chauffeur outfit. You know, I've come to serve you. Real humility. He said, I want to come along for the ride. And he threw the keys at me. He said, I want you to take the wheel. Threw the keys at me. He said, I want to take the wheel. I want, to, I want to ride with you. And here's the Lord with me in this vision. And he said, Todd, this vehicle's name is Fast. F-A-S-T. Fast. He said, this will get you to your destination. And what, have, what would have took six years, six months? What would have took six months, six days, six days, six minutes? He said, this will get you to your destination. There's an acceleration in the spirit right now. He said, again, there's a momentum, an acceleration in the spirit. And God was offering. He said, Todd, this is the ministry model for 2005 I'm about to bring out on the market. It's just a whole new model. And I thought, Wow. And, and then the vision changed, and I saw this slick salesman, this slick salesman, 
And, and he, he had this, this car lot, and they were all Oldsmobiles. All of them were Oldsmobiles. You know, pretty nice. And he was very convincing. You know, you know hey, listen, you know, that's great, but this is the better buy and the economy. And, you know, it's just a really wise, and it's worked before, and it'll always work. You know, why do you need something new? Just come on, let's settle for this. And, you know, I could get you into one of these for a great deal. And, and uh, you know, something within me was like, you know what, you're right. You know, let's, let's just kind of do it the way we've been doing it. And the Oldsmobile. And, uh, but there was a choice that I needed to make in the spirit whether I wanted to embrace the Lord's new vehicle of acceleration in which there's going to be a momentum and acceleration in the spirit and destin- destinations, not six years, six months, six months, six days. But he said, this car, Todd, only drives on one highway. It only handles on one highway. He said, it's the highway of holiness. He said, if you will choose the highway of holiness, I will take you and what you would have not touched for 10 years, I'll let you touch it now. Goes along with what Bill was talking about last night. Bringing things that were meant for the future into our time right now. But you know what? Most of us are settling for the Oldsmobile. Just the old way of doing things. Listen, God wants to take us into a whole new place of possibility, realms of possibilities of what we can touch. Now listen, the Hebrews calls it tasting of the powers of the age to come. On the earth right now, Hebrews 6. Tasting of the powers of the age to come. Now, the future world right now. How many of you want that? I feel like there's going to be a real release of the anointing tonight of acceleration. But there's only one highway this car handles on, and it's the highway of holiness. And you know what I found out in the natural? In the natural, this year, they discontinued Oldsmobile. As of this year, I found that out. So I have this encounter. I thought, God, what's with the Oldsmobile? He said, that's the old. I'm done with that. He goes, this is the new vehicle that I'm bringing up. Then I find out in the natural, this year, they cancel the Oldsmobile. There's something up in the spirit, guys. And uh, get ready. There's coming an anointing of acceleration. God's going to release it in these meetings. Acceleration in, in, in things we're encountering in the realm of revelation that's coming. So let me share with you what happened last night. Lord, I pray for an atmosphere in this place. A realm of authority in this place. The Holy Spirit in prophecy in this place. In such a dimension, oh God, that we, we taste of the realm of your kingdom in a new way. That there just come over this meeting right now a sovereign mantle, a covering, an atmosphere in which men and women can have the eyes of their heart open to see the invisible realm. Such a wonderful place. I was waiting on the Lord last night and as Bill was speaking, I just wanted to soak and enjoy the presence of the Lord and get as full as I could before I go home. And I had an unusual encounter in which I was taken up and I went to Australia. Literally, I walked the streets in Australia. I was translated to Australia. I came up over the ocean and came into the harbor of Sydney. And uh, I heard the Lord speak to me, Sydney Harbor. I said, what does it mean, Lord? He said, there's something about ministry and a church in Sydney, and it's Sydney Harbor. They're, they're a church in the harbor. When you would say Sydney Harbor, you know who you're talking about. You know, and uh, we're going to Australia, and I actually carried with me a briefcase. And I thought, like, I was thinking, like, men in black. You know, I had some kind of delivery or something. You know, I had this briefcase <laughs> with me, and I, took the, I met this pastor in the spirit. And I took this briefcase and I clicked it open like as if there was going to be money or something in this thing. I, I clicked it open and I took out this mantle. And I said, what's that, Lord? He said, this mantle is for that pastor. He said, I'm going to give him a mantle for nations, crusades, miracles. You're going to give him your mantle, Todd. You're going to go all the way to that church, find that man. You're going to lay hands on him. He's going to receive this mantle for healing. Now, what God spoke to me was on the Day of Atonement, he visited me as well concerning Australia. And I saw the Son of Righteousness rise with healing in His wings and a healing revival touch Australia that beamed out of Australia into Indonesia and touch Southeast Asia. 
the Lord said there's really key, Australia and what's going into Southeast Asia and Australia, and really key what's happening right now and what's going to happen in Indonesia amongst the Muslims and how it's going to be with my healing power that they come to understand that Jesus is Lord. So there's a real destiny over Australia. I understand my commission. I'm going to Australia. I'm going to find this man in, in from Sydney Harbor. But I felt like there was somebody here tonight that we could stand in for that word for Australia. And I would pray for you. And you've come here right now. And I want to lay hands on you very quickly. And you're going to take this mantle. Come on down here. There might be several of you. You're going to take this anointing back to Australia, and I'm prophesying a healing revival. I've documented it, by the way. It's on my website. You can go on to my website, and if you'd like, you can pull off all my visitations from the Day of Atonement. It's called Destiny. Destiny. Friends of mine do the shepherd's rod. I do Destiny. Destiny. Timely prophetic words and revelation for 2005. Come up here and just line up across the platform. Only those of you that don't live here, you're going to, back to Australia. Not that you moved here 10 years ago and you're living in Canada. I, that, I, don't want, I want people that are like here six months or here just for the conference and you're going back to Australia. Okay? And I'm going to release this anointing. You're going to carry this mantle. Lord told me it will be as great as the voice of healing revival was in the 40s and 50s right here in North America. He said what I'm about to do in Australia. And he said Australia will be a key player in what's going to happen in Southeast Asia and with terrorism as well. And uh, that's kind of why. Lord spoke to me. He said, you know why the embassy was bombed in Australia? I said, why? And he said, because the enemy is aware of the destiny that Australia has in bringing revival to Southeast Asia. And that, that's why um, the bombings that have been taking place in Australia and the embassy even recently and uh, he said, I'm going to release a tremendous healing revival. He said, it'll be like Malachi 4.2. The son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. And it also speaks of a new day, a new day coming to Australia. The dawning of a new day coming to Australia. And a tremendous movement and outpouring of healing in Australia. Miracle signs and wonders. This is great and greater than the voice of healing revival that was birthed in the 1940s here in America. God will raise up hundreds, hundreds of ministries in power, miracle signs and wonders. They will go into Indonesia. They'll go into Southeast Asia. Listen, Malaysia. I saw a, a, an open vision of a tidal wave of revival hitting Malaysia. I'm telling you, it's coming. Even in the next 12 to 14 months, things are about to break out in Malaysia. And uh, our team's going there in December. But there's something breaking out. But God, release that for right now for Australia. Boom, ba, shaba, boom, ba, shaba, boom, ba, shaba, suba, shiba, ba, 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 ba. Crusades, masses, stadiums in Australia being filled like in the days of Catherine Coleman. Release it again. Fire, fire, fire for Australia. Fire, revival mantle, a preaching mantle like a John the Baptist mantle. We're preaching in Australia, strong anointing like Evan Roberts. Evan Roberts, strong revival preaching mantle on you. Thank you, Lord, for Australia, for its destiny in Jesus' name. Ha. Send them back full of fire. Whoa! Now, now I, I, I went from Australia after that in the spirit, and I went to Europe. And I was on a ferry boat going from Eastern Europe, Estonia. I was on a ferry boat, and I went into Finland. And the Lord told me, he goes, a great revival is about to break out in Finland. It'll be, I mean, the con listen. He said, he said, the conversions in Finland will be like Finney. The conversions in Finland will be like Finney. And I, I, literally, I'll tell you the honest truth. My eyes were open. I was on the ferry boat. I was going into Finland. And I saw um, almost like an atomic explosion of glory come down over Finland. And it started spreading into other places. Missionaries going out of Finland into Eastern Europe, Estonia, Latvia, other countries. And I want to pray for somebody right now from Finland right now. I want to pray for you. Come up here quickly. Yeah, Finland? Yeah, not used to live there. This is going to Finland from Finland. Okay? I, I, you, you're from Finland? Good. Stay right there. Tremendous revival mantle going to Finland right now. I'm going to pray for you. It'll be like Finney. It'll be like the meetings that Charles Finney had. Tremendous conversions. Conviction. Fear of the Lord falling in Finland. In Jesus' mighty name. Shababa, Bukuska, Bam Bam, Shuba, Humba, Shika, Bumba Baranda, Shuba, Shuba, Shuba. 
Right now, Lord, for Finland. Destiny and revival being released right now in the spirit. Destiny and revival being released right now in the spirit. Yeah, it's, it's coming. Woo, there we go. Have a little more of that. Woo. It, it is. It's on you right now. It's resting. I'm telling you, it's breaking out amongst the young people. There's something of about a whole youth culture being raised up in Finland and catching the fire of God. Young people, youth, fire, fire, fire in Finland. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Release it now. That glory. Hallelujah. Double it on you. Woo! Hallelujah. All right. That was fun. Now, from Finland, now this is interesting because I was in Europe yesterday, and I don't know the whole story, but I've heard part of it, but this really relates to something that I believe is going to happen tonight. But there was a woman in England, and she called her husband and said, I was waiting on the Lord, and I felt, I don't know for sure, but I felt like Todd, his spirit, came to me and visited me in England yesterday. So... That's pretty neat, because I feel like there's going to be a grace in heaven tonight. And we've seen this happen in meetings where we actually visit people, and they see me, and I pray for them, they get healed, and then they call me back in Canada, and they go, Todd, you came to me last night and prayed for me, and I was healed. And sometimes I'm aware of it, and other times I'm not. But somebody from England called all the way over and said, what's going on? You know, I felt like Todd came to me in the spirit. And uh, so I wouldn't be surprised, because I was on my way to Finland. So, but anyways... (laughs) <laughs> stop in England. Anyways, here's the thing. After that, all of a sudden I was in, in just in heaven somewhere. But this door opened. And that's the important part. This door opened. And I heard this voice say, get in here. And he grabbed me and he pulled me into this room. And he shut the door. And I looked into this room and it was a strategy room in heaven. A war room. And I was in this room in heaven And this man that reminded me of some old general in the United States, like, who was that guy, Schwarzkopf or, you know, you know who I'm talking about? You know, I thought, Sergeant Slaughter here or something, you know, this old guy who was bald, this old general, and he was in the room. And he he had actually opened the door and grabbed me and he whispered, come in here. And he yanked me into this war room, shut the door, and there wasn't very much light in the room, but I saw this table. And on the table was a scroll. And, uh, and listen to this. One glass of vintage wine. A red wine sitting on the table. And right then I saw a bottle that said 2060. He said, Todd, how would you like to drink the wine now in 2004 that I'm going to pour out in 2060? Because I have a glass of it right here on the table. I thought, Really? <laughs> and then, you know, I, I, thought, I started thinking of an encounter I had in April. And the encounter was this. God was allowing us to drink out of the wine room in heaven, the very wine that he poured out on the day of Pentecost. Todd's, God said, I still got bottles of that up here. I thought, really? You, I mean, I can taste for a moment in an encounter in your presence what it was like in that very moment you poured out your spirit on Pentecost. He said, yep, and I've got the very wine that John Edwards drank. I've got the very wine that, the, that Evan Roberts drank. I've got the very wine that they drank in 1940. I've got even wine in heaven that I haven't, the church hadn't even drank yet, and, and I want to give people a taste. The old wine and the new wine. How many of you would like to be able to taste of some old vintage wine? Could, could that... Could that be possible that for a moment God could let you in on the very grace that rested on a revival years ago? Mmm. Savor that. So here I am in this encounter, and this guy goes, and he rolls this scroll out, and it becomes the map of the whole world. And we're looking at the map, and I'm thinking, well, where am I looking? I mean, which country? I mean, here's the whole world. And uh, all of a sudden, I went, oh, Pakistan, and I went to Pakistan. And God said, Todd, tell the people, mark my words, Pakistan will open for the gospel with massive gatherings of tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands being harvested in Pakistan with the gospel. God's going to open it. And it was the first time that I had ever went there. And it was the first time that I ever said, God, give me Pakistan. And I feel like there may be somebody here tonight right now, a missionary, somebody that's working in Pakistan. I want to pray for you right now. It's about to open up for the gospel. I don't know when we're coming, but I think I'm looking at 2005 or 2006, and I'm going to go into Pakistan. Uh, It's dangerous, uh, but we're going to go because God promised he's going to give Pakistan. They're going to fall to the gospel. 
they're going to fall to the gospel. Pakistan will fall to the gospel. There's somebody here I need to pray for right now. Are you from Pakistan? Okay. Are you going back? Good. Are you from Pakistan? From India. I love India. I love it. But you can stand in for Pakistan too because they were one, weren't they? Okay. I'll tell you, what you've heard about with Reinhard Monkey in Nigeria will happen in Pakistan. That same kind of harvest will happen in Pakistan. Lord, send a revival to Pakistan. <laughs> send a revival to Pakistan. Hallelujah. It'll be the gospel that breaks terrorism. It'll be the gospel that does it. Lord, anointing for Pakistan. Anointing for Pakistan. Come on. Break the wall down, oh God. Break the wall down. I feel the anointing on that. She's prophesying right now for something just came out of her mouth. My spirit felt that. <laughs> You know, this realm of being translated in the spirit is going to become common. John G. Lake, William Branham, Smith Wigglesworth, all of these different ministries lived in this realm. Six years ago, I was in the basement of an Anglican church in B.C. And this young girl came to me and said, Todd, pray for my grandfather. He's in the hospital in Pittsburgh. He's paralyzed totally. He can't even talk. He's hooked up to the machines. They think he might not even make it. And I said, I'll pray for you, honey. A little old courtesy prayer. You want to stand in the gap? And so I prayed for her. And why am I praying for her? The Lord shows up and speaks to me audibly. And he says this. He goes, what are you doing? How many of you know when you're praying and the Lord shows up and asks you a question? God doesn't need the answer. I'm telling you all it's true. I'm praying for this young lady. And the Lord shows He goes, what are you doing? He said, now I thought you just preached on radical faith for the impossible. He goes, I want you to do something about this. And, he, and I said, what do you want me to do? I mean, all of a sudden I was in Pittsburgh, translated. Boom, I'm in the hospital. I'm like, all right. So I walk into the man's hotel room. Or not his hotel room. <laughs> his hospital room. And I lay hands on him. He's instantly healed. How do I know that? He jumps out of his bed, runs down the hallway past the nurses and doctor's station. I'm telling you a true story. Listen to this. He phones us within several hours back in Canada. My physical body never left that meeting in BC. Calls his granddaughter with the testimony of how God's miraculously healed him and he's given his life to Jesus. Real story. Why did I say that? I feel like there's a realm of the spirit that we're going to touch tonight. I touched it last night where we're going to go places and lay hands on sick people and they're going to be healed even tonight. There was a woman with MS lying in a hospital in California and her husband called me up. They were worship pastors. Called me up and said, Todd, did you visit my wife in the hospital? I said, no. He said, my wife says you came into the hospital, laid hands on her, and that's why she received some healing. I said, What? She goes, you came and visited her, and, and it was after a meeting. You walked in the room, said, hi, how you doing? You called her up by name, laid hands on her, and she received healing. And I said, I never visited your wife in the hospital. He said, well, she saw you. I said, okay, I must have been translated. There was a witch doctor one time that came to one of our meetings. And this witch doctor came and stirred up some mess publicly. And 
I had a little confrontation. I said, okay, you're, you know, you're not going to operate in this witchcraft. And we bound the power of witchcraft. And we wanted him to leave the crusade. And so he did. Make a long story short. He goes back home. And he's waiting for a visitation from the demonic realm. Kind of like when Saul went to the, the witch. And they were waiting for this answer to come. They weren't really expecting Samuel to show up. And so here I am. And uh, I'm in my hotel room. After the meeting in Africa, we were in Uganda. The witch doctor's gone home, and uh, he's waiting for a visitation from the demonic realm, and I showed up in his room. Preached the gospel to him. Preached the gospel to him. And uh, he's at the crusade now the next day in the natural. He said, short, fat, white guy with the beard came and visited me last night when I was waiting for this visitation of the demonic. And he said, I'm born again now because I've realized the power of God is greater than the power of Satan. True story. Now, I just went to bed. I wasn't aware that I went. But thank God, he was at the meeting the next day and he was saved and he said I was in his house and that was getting up for me. You know, but listen, those realms of the spirit are to be normal for the Christian. Can't will yourself, but they're to be normal for the Christian. Especially in this healing explosion that's coming. Uh, you know why I'm sharing those stories? I'm creating a realm right now for something that's going to happen tonight. I'm creating a realm. There is a woman in here right now that had some kind of a cancer or something's happened to your lung. They've removed part of one of your lungs. And you need a creative miracle. You need your lungs to be healed. They're missing a part of your lung. And uh, God's going to recreate the lung. I'm, I'm decreeing lung will grow back tonight. We had a man in Albany, Oregon come into one of our meetings, 1978. They removed a piece of his lung. We prayed for him. He shot back 10 feet, got up, got the x-ray within a couple of weeks. And guess what? The lung had grown back. There's a woman in here right now somewhere in the auditorium that needs a recreative miracle in your lung. One of your lungs has had either cancer or somehow it stopped um, operating. They've removed the part of it. Part of your lung is gone. I want to pray for you. If that's you, you need to come up to the front right now. And uh, we're going to lay hands on you. And God's going to give you a brand new lung tonight in Jesus' name. Now, this was unusual. I don't know how this is going to play out. But last night I went to the inner city in Toronto. And I saw these manholes. You know, these manholes out in the street. And I thought, there's either street people down there. Or, or, or there's somebody. It had to, had to do with sewers, actually. City works. I felt like there's somebody here in the meeting that works for the city in Toronto. And I need to pray for you right now. And, and there's something of destiny that involves people that live out in the inner city concerning the streets. But there's somebody here that works for the city of Toronto. You have a city job here in Toronto. And uh, I want to pray for you. Okay, city works. I saw the inner city. And I'm not sure what it is that you do, whether it's surveying or, or what. But if that's you, there's just one individual that's here right now. There's a man. I have a prophetic word for you. I want you to come down to the front right now. Very quickly, just come right down here. And uh, we're going to prophesy over you. But there's really something that's about to break out amongst some of the young people in the streets, living down in the inner cities of Toronto. I saw them in the spirit last night, and I saw a revival sweeping through the inner city uh, downtown uh, here in Toronto. The Lord said, there's one man here. Maybe you're retired right now, but you worked for the city of Toronto. City works uh, downtown. And I want to pray for you right now. Come up here right now, please. You work for the city. Are you retired now? You're still working. Come over here, please. Okay. How long have you done that? 24 years. Now, there were two things that came. God's going to release something of a supernatural gra grace in the area of wealth and finances. I don't know if it's inheritance, investment. There's something that's about to be released as far as provision that's been tied up. It's been lost. And God's going to release it to you double fold what the thief has stolen. That was something that came to you very clearly as far as this great anointing of the glory and the gold and the wealth that was going to be released to you. And uh, I was going to lay hands on you. I don't know if you work at all in, in forward that you people are out on the streets, the young people or whatever. But uh, somehow you're tied into what God's going to do downtown as far as ministry amongst some of the young people that live right out in the streets down there in Jesus name and I need to also ask you specifically what was the whole thing about the sewers does that mean anything at all because that was something I needed to pay attention to in the vision I, I kept seeing the manholes and underground the whole system of, of how things work underground with water and the whole thing does that mean anything to you 
Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see what that all means, but I feel like... Well, the, the young people on the streets you're talking about, I used to attend a small church that was called uh, the Street Connection, and we used to go down on the streets, and they still go down, but I used to feed the homeless people. There's something, there's something going on right now as far as a revival that's going to break out to downtown in the inner city, and it involves some of the young people that are living out in the streets, some of the kids that are out there right now. And they may be living down in those sewers. They may be living down in those places right now, and uh, God's going to touch them. And somehow you were connected to that whole thing. Uh, Street Connection was a place that you used to go. Well, we bless that. We bless ministry right now, and we release supernatural wealth and provision for you in the name of Jesus. May God cause dreams to come alive in your heart again concerning the ministry of mercy the ministry of mercy right now the ministry of mercy some old dreams okay that God's going to resurrect in your heart concerning ministry and mercy again in Jesus name God's going to release a provision somehow you're a key part of what he's going to do in Jesus mighty name okay that was good now I know this young lady here on the floor works downtown I mean you know young here (laughs) I can't get away from this lady everywhere I go she's chasing us down wants the anointing God visited me tonight in my hotel room, Steve. God, Lord really spoke to me in my hotel room. He said, Todd, he said, I'm going to place a mantle. And I actually saw you in a crusade in Africa with masses. And I mean, it was an evangelistic event with miracle signs and wonders. There was a team that went with you out from Toronto, but it, it was, I mean, it was a crusade. It was the harvesting and the morning. And I don't know how the whole thing's going to play out, but God's going to make room for that mantle, that identity to fit into who God's called you to be as far as this whole thing with masses and harvesting in the nations. And I mean, massive gatherings, crusades, multitudes, preaching the gospel. I mean, the whole thing, miracle signs and wonders, and that God was going to place on this house. I saw God place on this house a mantle like the anointing that he's placed upon myself and different ones that are working in the nations, filling stadiums, doing the massive crusades. And I thought, God, you're going to give to somebody in this meeting. And it became even more clear to me that it's not somebody, but it's a mantle that's coming on the house. And there's going to be all kinds of evangelists for harvest in a mass way raised up. I know that Duncan's one of them. And we, we've seen it on him. It's happening. It's evident. Uh, but I saw it on Steve tonight uh, in my hotel. The Lord said, I want you to release to him right now a mantle for masses and harvest. And there's even others in this place that are really about to catch hold of that vision as far as let's go in and take, you know, a, a stadium and let's fill it uh, in India. Let's go in and take a stadium in Pakistan and let's fill it. Let's go into Africa. And it'll be like what you're doing in Nigeria, but it won't just be for training leaders. It'll be a real heart to go in and hold massive crusades uh, and teams that'll go out with you uh, from here for massive gatherings uh, of harvest and miracles in Africa and different countries like that. So I want to release that mantle and uh, say, let it increase upon you, Steve. Let it increase upon your wife uh, a vision and a passion to create the culture for evangelism uh, and miracles taking place in the nations. Uh, it's something that happens already, but in a whole new way, God's about to drop a mantle for, for, of authority and power to stand before hundreds of thousands and preach the gospel. God's going to facilitate that. And it's a vision that God is birthing and releasing in the house. So we say, let that mantle come right now in Jesus' name. Who feels really called in this room? I'm serious right now. Who really has it in their heart right now? You've dreamed about seas of humanity in the nations and preaching the gospel like an Amy Simple McPherson, Catherine Coleman, Reinhard Bonnke, T.L. Osborne, like, like really have felt, not, not, you know, I mean, honestly, you've seen it, you've dreamed it, you've felt it, you weep about it. I mean, it's all over your life. Uh, in a minute, you'd do it and you'd go. I mean, I'm telling you, God's releasing a mantle for apostolic harvest. And he's going to send some of you right now. Listen, the days of dreaming. It's, we're dreaming and dreaming and dreaming. But action, it's time. Just do it. What are you waiting for? Just do it. It's time to enlist laborers. Walking flames of harvest. There's coming a great commissioning even tonight, right now, where God is going to enlist. Listen, he came. He came. He said, Reinhard, listen, you weren't my first choice. You weren't my second choice. You weren't my third choice. You weren't even my fourth choice. How many people had God went to before he gave to Reinhard what God gave him? Listen, I'm telling you right now. How many others had God went to before he came to me? How many others did God go to before he went to Benny Hinn? 
And you know what? They're passing on. They're passing on. Kenneth Hagin, T.L. Osborne, you know, they're, they're aging. You can count on one hand right now. You listen, in Canada, I, I know, but maybe three or four in Canada that I can think of. There's always more. But I can really only think of three or four in an entire nation right here in Canada that are actually doing anything in a massive way concerning the harvest in other nations. Peter Youngren. I mean, Bill Pranker. I mean, there's just a few, John. Where are the evangelists in Canada? Where are they? Where are they? God, release a new breed. Release a new breed. Release a new breed, young and old alike. Release a mantle for apostolic harvest, for multitudes, for miracles, for stadiums. We dream about it, oh God. It's time. It's time. We release it. I want you to hunger before the Lord right now. And I want you to just say, Lord, I receive the nations. Listen, he gives them to you. He gives them to you. Fire, 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 fire. Anointing is caught, my friends. Hunger and desperation. The anointing is caught. God will give you cities. God will give you nations. God will give you souls. He'll do it. Listen, how many of you actually lie on your bed? This happened to me 10 years ago when God touched my life. When God called me, I would lie on my bed. I was a brand new Christian, saved but days. And I would dream on my bed for several hours. And in my head, I would dream about massive crusades. And being in the nations and harvest and multitudes. And whenever I saw it on the television set, something inside of me would start weeping. And I couldn't get away from it. Lord, release them. Release them. Release them. Release them. Release them. Release them. God, let there be a thousand in Canada that would go into the nations and see hundreds of thousands reached with the gospel. Let there be a thousand. In G- you don't have to be from Canada, but I'll tell you, I had an encounter just recently. I shared it yesterday. Where the mass crusade mantle came to me in August in Kelowna. And he said, Todd, I'm about to mantle people for the masses. The eyes of the Lord running to and fro. I'm looking for men and women that I can give ministry to, like I've given to Reinhard Bonnke and T.O. Osborne. Listen, we, we need a large sickle if we're going to go into Indonesia. God's given you something in Indonesia, John. God's given you something, your whole team in Indonesia. Something for the Muslims in a mass way, in crusades, in Indonesia. It's just come over you right now. Southeast Asia. There's a whole thing throughout Southeast Asia right now in which you can go in and thrust in the sickle right now. The harvest is ripe. They're ready to be reached with the gospel, with the love of his presence. There's a tremendous anointing right now for Southeast Asia and uncharted areas of going in with the gospel. I'm telling you, tremendous. And uh, there's coming a mantle right now on this house in which God is going to touch men and women in this place, and there's going to be testimonies of ones raised up that are reaching people in a mass way. Listen, I'm, I'm for all the other forms of evangelism. You need to understand. I really am. But we, you know what we need? We need power evangelism that can shake cities. We need that mantle again that can shake whole cities. That can touch a nation in five days. That can just go in, meet the president, get him saved, do a massive... Cru- and Bam! And then plant the churches and do the discipleship and all the other stuff. But God's calling and looking for those that will take up that mantle. And if that's you, I want your hunger to cry out to him right now and receive it from heaven. Just receive it from heaven. Come on, God, give me laborers. Raise up the 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 laborers. 
Raise up the laborers. We've dreamed about it. We've dreamed about it. We've dreamed about it. Now raise them up. Raise them up. Send them out. Send them out. Commission them. Anoint them. Send them out. Walking flames of harvest. Walking flames of harvest. Hey, hold on, hold on. How many of you right now already, maybe for the last five, ten years, I mean, you're already doing it. You're an evangelist, you're doing it already. Already. You're already doing it. How long have you been doing it? Nine years. Massive crusades, evangelism, you want want to take it, okay? God bless that gift right now in her right now acceleration God take it into the stadiums take it into the stadiums take it into the stadiums how, I want to know right now how many of you already not just doing evangelism you're actually doing crusades maybe they're only reaching three four thousand but you're doing st- a small stadium crusades in countries already already functioning in that not you want it already I want you to come up onto the platform you're already doing it I want to pray for those evangelists God's given us a grace listen Six years ago, I worked in the sawmill. Okay, we, we, absolutely nothing. The grace of God came. We've been in over 40 countries in the last six years. We've had a quarter million decisions for Christ in 12 months. I'm going for one million by next spring. You know what the Lord told me? He told me, Todd, when you're 30, you'll have done a crusade with a million people in it at night. By the time I'm 30. I'm going for it, John. At 30 years old, I'm pulling out all the stops I'm going into India, and we're going to get grounds for a million people. I want to do it by the time I'm 30. And I'll tell you what, that's the way God wants us to think. It's harvest time. Do you know that the year 2000 was when God released the grace for the millions? Every meeting that Reinhardt has done in Africa since the year 2000, I was there for the Great Millennium Crusade. Since that time, all the meetings are winning millions now. It went from hundreds of thousands to millions in 2000. When that happened, the Lord said, that's just the first fruits. He got the breakthrough so everyone else can enter in. It's common now to have a million people. Benny Hinn just had how many million in Bombay, India. He's going back into Bangladesh. They're expecting four million. You see, the millions are open and ready for the harvest right now. So are these, you guys are all evangelists right now, doing crusades already in different countries. Amen. Where are you working? Which country? India. You're working in India already? Doing the crusades there? Praise God. Which part of India? Madras, Chennai. Madras, Chennai. Praise God. All right. And where are you at? Work as a team. You work all as a team. You know where I'm working? In Angol. I was just in Angol. We had 139,000 decisions in Angol. Had two crusades in Angol. I'm going back to Angol in March. That's where the crusade is. We drove up from Chennai. And uh, listen, you've got to connect. We have an office in India as well, and you've got to connect. We're coming in March if you're going to be there. And you can get the information off our website. We want to labor together, friends, because God's going to release a mighty harvest in, in Pakistan too. And what better, Sri Lanka, what better than God raising up his own, hallelujah, from within his own country. What, what, what a, what, I'm going to lay hands on you. I'll tell you what's going to happen. The moment I touch them, you're going to go, whatever you've done in your ministry, you're, you're, you're going to accelerate. You're going to accelerate. I mean, finances, the whole thing. Listen, I believe there's a grace that God can touch on ministry that you can go from like 10000 a month to 150000 You can go from 5000 in a meeting to fit just by an anointing. I believe that. So, Lord, I pray that you release that for the masses right now. Boom! Bah, Jesus' mighty name. Massive harvest and crusades right now. Where are you working, sir? Korea right now. Korea. North Korea too? North Korea? Not yet. North Korea. I'm prophesying North Korea. North Korea right now. Yep. Take it. South and North. Release it right now. Where are you working? India too. Lord, bless it. Bless it. India right now. Give it to them. Nations, stadiums. All. Latin America. Come on right now. Oh. Yeah, you want South Africa, right? You want South Africa. You want South Africa. Take that. Hallelujah. How about you? Where are you doing it? Latin America. Latin America. Come on. Children. Come on. Crusades for children. Oh, yeah. Where are you doing it? Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Yeah. How about you? Where are you doing it? Ghana, Africa. Where are you doing it? Latin America. Latin America. Take it now. Boom. Double it. Triple it. 
Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. God into the stadiums with miracles in Puerto Rico. Where are you doing it? Brazil. Brazil right now. More. Double it in Brazil. How about you? New York City. Listen. <laughs> yeah. We, we just had a crusade in the Bronx. We had hundreds of people that we had out in the streets every day in the Bronx. Uh, and I'll tell you what, that's, God's going to do it. How about somebody's got to take it for America? Boom, ba! One thousand, we want to see evangelist. The rest of you can make it back to your seats now if you like. Listen, if you've really had it in your heart and you're looking for that, that, that jump start, come with us on a missions trip. I'll get you jump started. I mean it. Don't just come up and pray. Come on one of the harvest trips and I'll get you jump started. I'll help you launch if you want to launch crusade ministry. Come and see how it's done. Come, I'm giving you an open invitation to come and see how it's done. Come and get involved. <laughs> you know, we don't just pray for laborers. We take them. I'll take a thousand people with me. <laughs> now let me call out these names very quickly. Okay? Let me call these names out very quickly. Uh, your name, Bob, or you might, it may be Robert and you go by Bob, but I heard Bob and Melinda, or Robert and Melinda, that means something to somebody, come down here right now, okay, Bob and Melinda, and then I heard the last name, Parks, there's some kind of a supernatural intervention coming for the family name, Parks, that means something to you right now, Parks, come down here please, and there's a lady here, there's a lady here that's come from South Africa. You've got a ministry uh, um, in South Africa, missionary, a woman evangelist. I want to pray for you. you, you you've come up, you're working in South Africa. I want to pray for you right now. Uh, there's also uh, John and Rosa. Something, there's some kind of a connection with the name John and Rosa. I want to pray for you right now, very quickly. And Parks and uh, Bob and Melinda right now. I want you to come down here, please. These are just names the Lord gave me in prayer, and I've got some prophecies we're going to release. Okay? And then we're going to do something tonight. I'll tell you, you want to see a healing explosion, we're going to have one. Who's this? Bob and Melinda. Okay, is there anybody else here right now? Bob and Melinda. Okay, Parks, who are you? And you're Melinda? No, it's Bob and Melinda together. Yeah, okay, Parks, thank you, Lord. Come up here, is your family with you? Okay, come up here right now. What's that? They're not Christians yet. Listen, what's wrong with your buddy? I have a muscular dystrophy. That's why I called you out here then. I was thinking, I saw a spirit of infirmity. I thought it was in your bones and in your joints. Is it in your bones and joints as well? God's going to bring divine supernatural intervention. He called Parks out for healing tonight. We're going to lay hands on him and declare healing. When God heals you, you'll get a mantle like Daniel, the prophet. There's a tremendous anointing for understanding dreams and visions, wisdom, excellence, a mantle like Daniel on you. And uh, God's going to use you to speak to government. I don't know how it's going to work, but you're speaking to government. You're bringing the word of the Lord to presidents and kings uh, by visions. You're getting things in the night. The anointing God's placed upon you for uh, technology is going to take you really into high places as far as uh, corporate, the corporate world. And God's going to really anoint you in a, uh, like a Bill Gates kind of a way. Okay, it'll be a good thing, but real entrepreneur, real businessman. But you'll be a prophet in it. You'll be a prophet in the midst of it, like Joseph, like Daniel. But God's going to bring healing through your body tonight. He doesn't just give me last names to call somebody out for nothing. In Jesus' mighty name, I command that spirit of infirmity to come out of your body right now. Oh, I just heard it crack. Something in your body cracking right now. Command that spirit of infirmity in your muscles and in your nerves. Go! In Jesus' mighty name. Oh! I could go under the power right now. Help me, God. Hallelujah. Come up here, please. Where's John and Rosa? And actually, here's the funny thing about the name John and Rosa. He actually kept saying it to me like 10 times. It actually became a song that I found myself singing in my hotel room. I was like, John and Rosa, 
John and Rosa. I had this whole thing going. I, I was like, I don't know what it means, but I, I was singing for like 10 minutes. John and Rosa, John and Rosa. I was like, what is that? That's crazy. Lord said, just speak the word and I'll do the rest. I don't know what that whole thing means. Listen, what do your, what's your dad do? Yeah, that's what I thought. He's got cancer. Okay, your twin, Melinda. Lift your hands up. You see, there's been a spirit of infirmity and death and cancer through your generational line, your family. There's been a whole battle with people being cut down in their prime. And uh, I feel like God's going to break something with you tonight. He's going to give you this impartation. You know why I'm feeling your hands here? Ooh, goodness. There's this oil on you, right here on your hands for healing. I'm telling you right now. You know, can we pick her back up? I'm not done messing around with her yet. Yep, the supernatural invention. It's like the angel of the Lord's going to visit your house. And that spirit of death and cancer, we rebuke it right now in Jesus Christ's name. Blah, 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 blah. Be drunk as drunk as... God, how drunk can she be? Blah, 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 blah. Ah, wah. How drunk can she be? How long, Lord, can it last? Ha <laughs> ha. All right, that's good. John and Rosa. Oh. Rosa, Rosa's probably some kind of a nickname, actually. You know, your wife could be uh, Rose or Rosie. It's something that you might call her, even though her name is something else. But to you, she's Rosie or Rosa. But uh, anyways... Okay, where am I? I'm in Toronto. Oh, I forgot the most powerful encounter out of all the ones I had last night. (laughs) The most important one. Listen, I went out in the spirit, and I I went and visited, I'm not going to give all the details, but I went and visited a young girl in the spirit. And this young girl had been locked underground in a cellar or a basement. And I could, I could feel abuse, whether that was physical or sexual. It was almost like I could smell the stench of not being taken care of and starved, days without food, neglect. And uh, then I had a keychain given to me that had five keys on it. And he said, Todd, these keys are for those that were, as a child, so abused. They were locked in the basement and weren't fed for days. They were sexually abused, physically abused. They were put in cellars. They were isolated. Major rejection. And um, I'm giving you five keys for five ladies tonight. I've already prayed for one, by the way. And he said, I'm going to open up their prison and in an instant take out all that pain. That's, I mean, I went in the spirit. And I said, God, are you sure? He said, yep. And one of them was even kidnapped. And that's where the abuse came from. It wasn't even from their own parents. They were actually kidnapped. And by the grace of God, you survived that ordeal. There's at least five. I feel the break. It's hard for that right now. That you don't want you to come down here right now. I'm going to pray for you. It's been so hidden for so many years. Some people don't even know about it. But I was given five keys for five women. Lord said, when you lay hands on them, Todd, I'll take all the isolation and all the rejection and all the abuse. I'll take away that pain. And I'll restore them and make them whole. Right now. Okay, let me do this word here first. Is she not here for that word? Does it apply to this as well? Or is it? No. Okay, let's move her over there for a moment. I'm going to pray for that in a second. Who's this here, Steve? John and Rosa. Okay, let me just, I'm going to wait on those two. I'm going to deal with this here right now for a moment. Okay, so where's the ladies at? This lady here. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Now, God, I just pray for the power of your kingdom to come right now. I'm going to pray for all of them. And there's all this pain and trauma and abuse. And only the anointing can do it. 
Only the anointing can do it. The, the pain is so deep. And God's going to restore you back to that childhood innocence right now. God, I pray for that key right now to lock, unlock the door to every prison that they were put in right now in Jesus' mighty name. Release that door. Have some of the ministry team come right now and just continue to pray with them right now. I unlock your prison door in Jesus' mighty name. Right now. You know where God took me after he set these women free? You know where he took me? He took me into the field of praise and I danced with Jesus in the field of praise. I went out from the cellar into the field of praise. And Lord, I just ask you to take all that pain and isolation, rejection and abuse, all of it right now. The key, the authority to open up their prison right now. And release all the pain that came with all that suffering and that hunger and that abuse and all that rejection and all that pain, all that trauma right now. I command every demon power associated with that. Go right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, take it away. Come out. Take it away. Take it away right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Right now, take it away. Take it all away. Take it all away. Take it all away. Take it all away right now. Listen. One of these women I prayed for, your husband was the one that kidnapped you and abused you and, and something really, even from that relationship. There might even be still somebody in the room right now. You're hiding. You're hiding. Your life might even be in danger. Uh, you don't even, I don't know. If you can't come up here because of the situation, then don't. But I'm going to speak the decree that there's coming a breaking right now where there's been an assignment to, that's come from, from the husband, okay? I'm calling it out. It, it's being dealt with right now then. But you need the security to know that the word of the Lord is going forth right now. The word of the Lord is going forth right now. God's calling it out, and there's freedom coming right now. There's healing coming for you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I was, because sometimes when I touch certain people, I touch what they're going through. And so I touch, when I touch people with my left hand, sometimes I can feel all your emotional pain, all your physical pain. You know, just when people even touch me sometimes, I can go into their past and pick up on their whole, their whole history. And so, Lord, release that right now. I'm praying for more than five, but I know there's at least five that really apply to the word I received. And God will deal with all of those ones, and they'll be totally free tonight and never have to go through that again in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, on this young lady here in the green, a tremendous songist, prophetic song, worship, music, angels all around you, throne room, Revelations 4, music, minstrel, prophetic mantle, like a Keith Green mantle, prophetic song of the Lord. I mean, that whole thing coming on you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, set them all free. Set them all free. You're that word, aren't you? Right now. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, release it all right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Let me pray for this lady here right now. All the fear and all the torment, God, only you can take it all away and bring all the protection and all the healing. Thank you, God, right now, today. Okay, if there's anybody else over there, bring them in. Okay. What a, I loved it. I think tonight's going to be a real good ministry night. Sometimes the kingdom is best presented with few words and demonstrated with power. The kingdom of God is not in word only, but power. We've got to let the kingdom come. How you doing, Heather? Good. Close your eyes. You know, even in your stomach, I don't know if there's been a, uh, an eating disorder or there's that I'm seeing highlighted over your digestive area. It's probably connected to this whole thing that God's bringing healing to right now. But there's a physical healing that's coming where there's been some kind of a trauma that's come to your body because of the situation that you've lived through. Could have even been a self-hatred towards yourself. But God's going to release that almost like a spirit of death, that hopelessness, suicide, all of that kind of thing come off of you. A spirit of depression come off you right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You tried to commit suicide. That's what it is. I can just tell you right now, that's come out of that self-hate. That's come out of some of the terrible things you've been through. 
And God wants to set you free from all that right now. Spirit of death and torment and suicide leave you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Is your husband John? Okay. And what's your name? Rosa. Did he call you Rosa? Were you his little Rosa? Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit, right now. Where's he at? But there's a... There's something here. Yeah. God's had a real destiny over the two of you. For nations and missions and orphans and ch children. There's a true ministry over his life. Of prophetic ministry. And he was never received in that gift. And the tendency there is rejection. God's going to lift off that right now. You're real precious to the Father's heart. He's real precious to the Father's heart. That's why he was singing your name over and over for 10 minutes. He said, John and Rosa. Rosa was second. And you were his little Rosa. And he just kept saying that. So there's something of an impartation of the, the heart of God in love that's coming for you and your husband. That true ministry call being restored. I pray that you be released into the capacity of the gift of compassion and mercy that God's placed over you right now. And he be restored to that prophetic teaching, that preaching gift. There's a real gift of discernment there. And I just cover the both of you right now in the spirit. I see, uh, are you guys have connection with uh, South America or Latin America? or, or it, Because that was the whole thing that God spoke to me. He said, Rosa really ties in as well to that whole thing for ministry in South America and Latin America, Central America, all of that stuff right now in Jesus' name. The thyroid being healed. Do you have a liver problem at all? Have you had a problem with your liver that you know of? Your husband, something with the liver? Was he a drinking at one time, an alcoholic? Was there a bondage there? Okay, stay there. It's just stay there. Does that apply to you? Do you understand that, that whole thing that I'm talking about with the addiction, with alcohol, and, and, the, and the whole thing right now with the liver, that God wants to bring healing to that right now in Jesus' mighty name? You're from Colombia. Thank you, Lord. And you have a brother? Okay. And you're from Colombia right now? You're here visiting? You're living here? What's your brother's name? Eduardo. Okay, who's Rosa? My mom. Your mother is Rosa. And you're John. I feel like God wants to do a healing in you, John, right now in your body physically. I don't know if there's been a battle with addiction, but God's going to break something over your life right now. And uh, when I see, a, I don't know if it's your liver or actually your, your blood or something like that, God's going to bring healing right now throughout your whole body, this area right here in Jesus' mighty name. And uh, you want an impartation for, for ministry, for bringing healing, and see it go all the way back to Columbia. I don't know if your mother's sick or, or your mom is here. Okay. Where is your mother? How come she's not up here? Here in Toronto. Will you lay hands on her and release healing for her? Because she's real sick. But there's other people in your family. I feel like you're going to get called back to Columbia because of a family situation and a crisis. God will use you in a divine way to bring healing. I don't know how it's going to play out. <laughs> okay, Lord, I ask you to remove all that. The, the key to opening up prisons right now. Jesus, mighty name. We release that anointing. <sighs> Real anointing of God's favor on you and business. He's going to release a tremendous, it's like Thor in the Bible. She had a real anointing for wealth, but, but it, there's a whole thing in that, how she received Paul and the ministry and, and the whole thing about missions and, and a connection with finances and wealth. And my, God's really anointed you that way. And uh, acts of mercy through, through business, kingdom business and finances, uh, as far as even practical things concerning the kingdom. It looked just like Dorcas in the Bible. And she was the one that got raised from the dead because of her charitable giving. That was the reason that Peter raised her from the dead, because they said she gives so much money to the poor. <laughs> That's what they told Peter. When Dorcas died, they said, Peter, <laughs> this woman here was notable, rich, gave all this money to the poor, raise, them up, raise her up. And you know what? God did. And I think God honored her gifts to the poor. She was raised from the dead. But if you look at the story, the first thing was it, it really took note of the wealth and the mercy heart that she had. And then right after that, she was raised from the dead. I wonder if there was a connection there. Could be. Now, where am I? We're going to do a major healing thing here in a second. Lord spoke to me that there would be a realm of authority that we would touch in this meeting tonight that we could make a decree and stop sickness in its tracks. 
I want to tell you the honest truth. I have only touched this realm maybe three times in America that I'm sensing right now of authority in my heart. I am in a gift of faith right now that I believe that in the instant I speak the healing word, people in other countries will be instantly healed when you call them on your telephone. I'm telling you right now, there is an anointing in this service that we can speak the healing word for the servant that's lying at home dreadfully tormented and paralyzed. It doesn't happen to me very often. The Bible says Jesus sent the word... He sent forth his word and they were healed of their destruction. When? The word went out from heaven. Matthew 8 shares the story of the centurion servant, dreadfully tormented and paralyzed, lying at home in bed. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. How many of you understand there is a place in the realm of authority that you can make a decree, and in the moment that you speak that decree, heaven's power is released concerning a divine supernatural intervention, even for somebody in another province, in another city, in another nation. And they can be instantly healed. The realm that I touched in the Spirit was a realm in which Jesus spoke the word and devils left. It was a realm in which he spoke to the storm, the winds and the waves, and they obeyed him. It was a realm in which he spoke to the fig tree. It was a realm in which he spoke the healing word. It was a realm in which he did not permit demons to speak. There's a realm of authority, I feel it coming on me even now, that I'm going to make a decree, and when we make a decree, the healing word will go forth, and people will be delivered tonight because of what we speak in the prophetic decree. They'll be delivered, the process of healing, even instant miracles will be released, and sickness will be stopped in its tracks. For those who are terminally ill, there will be testimonies of miraculous healing. Here's what happened to me last night. I saw the doors to a hospital, the emergency ward of a hospital. The two doors were thrown wide open and there was a flash of white lightning and then the whole hospital was flooded with bright blinding light. The whole hospital. God said, I'm about to release the breaker anointing tonight, Todd. The anointing that breaks every bondage and removes every chain. Listen to me. I was in Malawi, Africa... And there were 65 terminally ill patients dying in the hospital. They were all going to die, all 65. The ministry team laid hands on them. Two days later, the entire hospital was emptied. Every single one of them checked out healed within two days. Let me tell you about the kind of anointing I feel in the room for tonight. I was in Mexico in August and a boy born with Down syndrome was healed. He was so healed, even everything about the way he thinks and talks was changed. Even his physical appearance, you wouldn't even know that he had Down syndrome. That's how healed he was. That's how healed he was. There was a man that touched the power lines, fell from, from the power lines, hit the ground, left his body, was going into heaven. So he must have been dead. I don't know for how long. The Lord sent him back into his body. They brought him to the hospital. He was in a vegetable state, lying in the hospital. They never thought he was going to live, couldn't talk. Just, he was gone. He was in a catatonic state. Some of our team members went into the hospital, laid hands on him. He was instantly, miraculously healed in his right mind, instantly. And he came to the meeting that night with his wife and got born again. I mean, just happened. We were just in a meeting in Bolivia, South Africa, or South America. I laid hands on a boy that was born without the ear. No eardrum, no hole, nothing. Just a piece of the skin here where the ear was trying to form. But no, he didn't even have the, the hole to put your finger in. God recreated the whole ear. He could hear perfectly normal on the spot. Listen, there's an acceleration of creative miracles. There's a tremendous opportunity that we have in the spirit tonight to apprehend the kingdom and see it break through in the lives of people that aren't even in this meeting. I was in Edmonton. Listen, I was in Edmonton this year. The angel of the Lord came to me in my hotel room. The healing angel, if you've heard my testimony. The healing angel, the real presence of the Lord in the form of an angel had come to my hotel room. And he said, Todd, when you go to the meeting tonight in Edmonton, this is what you're going to do. 
He said, you're going to have every person in the meeting get their cell phone out. They're going to call somebody even in another country, another area of the city, in another nation, in another province. They're going to phone their moms, their dads, their brothers, people in prison, hospitals, whatever. And you're going to pray as they hold their telephone up. You're going to make a decree and I'll heal people on the cell phone. I said, God, this is ridiculous. He said, this is the healing word. You watch. The angel's coming tonight. So I go to the green room. I'm in the green room. I've told nobody about what happened. This is in Edmonton. It's documented. Here we are in Edmonton. And uh, one of the ladies that was working for me at that time, a young woman, she, she saw the angel walk with me into the green room. And as I walked down the hall, she watched the angel walk with me into the service. When I stepped out onto the platform, a whole group of young people from Tehila and Calgary all saw the angel. We had a, probably 10 different people in emails that all saw an angel standing on the platform. I mean, that's how real the encounter was. Here we are in Edmonton, and uh, I, I get everyone to put, take out their telephones, and where they're going to call the sick. You know what happened after that? 65 testimonies of people instantly healed on the other end of the telephone. And I'm, I'm talking a testimony of a woman totally paralyzed in a wheelchair. And the moment the phone rang, she answered the telephone and she was instantly healed in her wheelchair. That's the, that, that was the realm of authority. That was just a moment. That was the realm of authority. I'm building faith right now. Just stay here. I'm building faith right now. I was, I was praying in that same meeting and a woman totally blind had me pray for her on her telephone. Totally blind. I commanded her eyes to be opened, and on the other end of the telephone, her eyes instantly popped open, and she screamed as she could hear on the other end of the cell phone. There was testimonies of tumors where people had tumors. The moment the telephone rang and the telephone was answered, the tumor fell off their body. I mean, this was real. It happened in Edmonton this year. And uh, testimony after testimony of the power of God healing people over the telephone. And then it broke out in the meeting. A woman on crutches was healed. A woman with a broken back was healed. A woman with a broken neck was healed. Um, deaf people were healed. Uh, um, you know, um, First Nations people that were deaf were healed. And the healing anointing started swirling around the building in Edmonton. And uh, it was a tremendous anointing. It happened when I was in England. And people in other parts of Europe, I was at Trevor Baker's. Uh, and as I spoke the word in other parts of Europe, people were healed. You can ask Bill Johnson. I was in his church the first time the realm of authority fell on me. I said, Bill, let, mark my words right now. There's a woman in the hospital dying. Bill's daughter, Bill Johnson's daughter said, that's my friend. She's in the hospital right now. All her internal organs have shut down. She's dying. They're on life support right now. She's not going to make it. I said, pick up your telephone, mark the time on your watch, and call her. She'll be healed. Her, Bill's daughter picked up the cell phone. This is in Redding, California. Picked up the cell phone, called the hospital. The instant the telephone rang in the hospital, the doctors were in the room checking the life machines. Right when the phone rang, the, the, the machines all became normal. They checked her out of the hospital. Nothing wrong with her. True story. True story. I was at Bill Johnson's this summer and I said, take out your telephone. The realm of authority is here. I'll speak the healing word. God's going to release Matthew 8. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. There's a realm of angelic activity right now where God wants to explode in his power. And so they, I call it healing explosions. It's like an atomic boom and the healing anointing goes, Phew! and it just goes out and changes atmospheres. Listen. Ooh, glory. It's going to fall on whole cities. There will be a day where the healing anointing... Listen, I was in Mexico. The healing anointing was so strong in Mexico, people in area hospitals reported healings and started checking out of the hospital. They reported being healed while we were having three simultaneous healing crusades in three different areas of Mexico. The area hospitals were being healed. I said, what was that, God? He said, that's heaven invading earth. He said, he said, think about Peter's shadow. All he had to do was walk by the sick in the streets of Jerusalem. I was just preaching in Omaha, Nebraska a few weeks ago, and there was a child with leukemia. They brought him into the meeting. He was going to die. He had leukemia. He was sitting down front. Um, I didn't even know he was there. I didn't know what his condition was, and I was just walking back and forth on the platform, ministering and healing, calling out words of knowledge. I didn't even pray for the boy. Quite frankly, the leaders of the church thought I was pretty rude in, in the fact that I didn't even give an opportunity for them to tell me what was wrong with the boy. I didn't even pray for the boy, but something in my spirit wouldn't even let me pray for him. I mean, it looked so mean to just turn away that young boy. 
The next day, the father was in the pastor's conference, and he got up and he said, I just came back from the hospital. They ran tests on my boy. They can't find one trace of leukemia. He said, as Todd was walking back and forth on the platform, something came off of the platform and touched my son and instantly healed him. just happened in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm building faith in this room tonight because I feel like people are going to be healed right where they are in their seats. But even greater than that, people are going to be healed over the cell phone. There was a woman in the hotel. We were in Redding, California. The woman was in her hotel with MS. The telephone in the hotel rings. She picks up the telephone. It's her friend on the other line. The power of God goes through the telephone and heals her of MS. She gets up and walks into the meeting an hour later. I go into an open... I go into an open vision and I see a pickup truck, the color of it, the name of it. I see it out in a parking lot. I go, this means something. A telephone rings. There's a man. He's in the parking lot on his way to that very vehicle. He falls out of the power in the parking lot before he could get into his truck and he's instantly healed. Can you imagine the day where the power of God comes down and it hits a meeting? And it's so, there's such an, an intense atmosphere of heaven that it pushes outside of the walls of the contained conference and impacts everybody within a 30-mile radius. You see, that's what used to happen in the days of Mariah Woodworth Eder. That's what used to happen in revival. You couldn't even get to the city limits without falling under the power. You couldn't even get, you know, you know people walking by the meeting were instantly healed or saved. I mean, that, that was an anointing that, that happens. Even now in, in certain meetings, people get healed just walking by. I was preaching in, in Africa, and there was a boy, he was deaf, and uh, he was walking by the crusade. And when he walked by the crusade, his deaf ear instantly opened. He was on his way like, to the Muslim mosque or something. He was a Muslim. He was walking by the meeting. There was so much power of God in the air. As he walked by, he was instantly healed. A boy had a tumor. He was at the hospital. And the doctor said, we can do nothing for the tumor in your leg. So the, the father said, there's a healing crusade in town. Let's go there. They, they load the boy up in the car. They drive over to the healing crusade. The moment the door, the car door opens, the boy steps out, touches the grass. The tumor falls off. A man covered in tumors is sitting in the bar getting drunk. He's sitting in the bar getting drunk. And as he's getting drunk, the bar owner gives authority to the gospel by tuning his radio into the crusade that's being preached live. The man is drinking his beer and the power of God comes through the radio, hits him on the top of his head, goes through his body and all the tumors disappear in the bar. He jumps in a taxi cab, drives over to the crusade in the taxi cab. The crusade is playing on the taxi radio. He drives over and he says, Todd, I was instantly healed in the bar tonight. He's still reeking of alcohol. I had tumors in my body. I heard you over the radio. When you prayed, the power of God exploded, came through the radio airwaves, and I was healed. Now, I felt the Lord gave a permission in the spirit. He said, Todd, a realm of authority in that we will make decrees. We, not just me, we will make decrees here in Toronto. Decrees that there will go out from this place such an explosion of God's power. It'll shake other cities and nations around the world. Even over the internet tonight, people can be healed. I want you right now, if you have a telephone, to get it out of your purse and your pocket or borrow your neighbor's. And I want you to call the most desperate sick person you can think of right now. Don't bring it up to me because there's like how many thousand people do we have in here? Get out your cell phone and call your mother, your father, somebody who's sick, your brother, your family, your friend. If you can reach somebody on your telephone, I want you to call them up right now. Just get out your cell phone. Borrow somebody else's if you need one. If they're not using theirs, ask for it. This is a point of contact right now. That's all it is. I want you to call somebody right now that's really sick. They won't all be instantly healed. I pray they will. But something's going to happen in this room in a moment. They could even be deaf in one ear. They could be blind in one eye. Whatever it is. The thing about the people in Edmonton, most of them weren't Christians. That were being healed. And you know what? They gladly received prayer. Hey, you'll like this, this realm, Carol. I was in a meeting in New Jersey, and the Lord gave me a, the name of a man that was in Florida that was backslidden. I called him up on his cell phone and said, hey, listen, I'm a prophet of the Lord. Have you ever heard of the psychics on TV that you call for a buck ninety-nine a minute? I said, how about this? The prophet of the Lord's calling you from New Jersey with a prophetic word. He gave his life back to Christ right there on the telephone. I gave him a prophetic word. 
And I've been in other meetings where I call people out by name and I go, who is that? Somebody will go, that's my mother. And I'll go call her up on the cell phone and I'll tell their mother on the telephone what the condition is in their body. Pray, they'll get healed and then we'll lead them to Jesus over the cell phone. Can you imagine if you were sitting at home and all of a sudden you got a phone call and somebody said, hi, I'm a prophet and I'm going to tell you your name and the name of your condition. And you know, that's the kind of stuff God's releasing right now. It's pretty wild. Oh Yeah. <laughs> Okay, how many, how many of you have people on the telephone right now? Sick people. Okay, just a few of you. I hope that's all the people that brought cell phones. How many people are on a cell phone right now trying to reach somebody? Okay, good. Just give you a few more moments. <laughs> you explain to them what we're going to do. You tell them in a few moments you're going to hold up your telephone. You tell them what we're going to do. You're going to hold up your telephone and I'm going to pray en masse. I'm going to rebuke spirits of infirmity and sickness. And you tell them to put the hand on their part of their body that needs to be healed. When I pray, the power of God's going to go out from this place and heal people on the telephone. You, you get them ready. Prepare their faith. Something happening already? What's happening? What's happening to mom? She's laughing. She's having fun. <laughs> Where's mom from? Minneapolis. Minneapolis. What's wrong with her? Say hi to her. Yeah, what's wrong with her? She's, uh, she's just been under oppression for... And you called and she's already laughing? She was laughing earlier. I called before you brought it up. I was calling before and the Holy Ghost was already touching her. The Holy Ghost was already touching her. Before I brought this up, you called her and she's laughing at home. And she's talking to my grandma on the other line. It's her birthday today. Oh, yeah. Let's get grandma and mom. Hey, mom. How you doing? Yeah. Hey. Hey. Is the power of God hitting you already? When did it start? As soon as your son called, the power of God hits you. But your son called you before I even told anybody to get out their telephone. Now, you've been under what? Some kind of depression or something? Yeah, and you're in Minneapolis, right? In Minnesota. Okay, and you have grandma on the other phone, right? Yeah. Okay. And she's in Michigan. So we can touch Michigan right now. Is anything wrong with your mother? Because I could... Okay, I'm going to pray right now for healing power to be released and for the joy of the Lord to hit you in Minnesota and Grandma in Michigan. Okay, right now. Ready? Stretch forth your hands, friends, here. Come on. Toronto is praying for you. We send you the blessing all the way from Toronto. We're going to send you the blessing. You ready? Holy Ghost, be loosed right now in Jesus' mighty name. Whoa! Let your power fall. Let your glory fall. And every spirit of depression, go! In Jesus' mighty name. Uh, what's up? Hey, what's mom? Ask mom if she can feel anything. Good. Holy Ghost, bless her. <laughs> bless her, bless her, bless her, and keep blessing you, all right? You're, you're going to be changed now. This thing is broken in Jesus' name. Listen, okay, who's got sick people on the telephone right now? Okay, stay back there. Don't come up here. I can't pray for everyone's telephones. When they get healed, I'll have you come up here. But here's what I want you to do. Everyone that's got a cell phone, tell the person right now, Todd's going to pray. Ask them to take one hand and put it on the area of their body that needs healing. Ask them to do that. Okay? Now... Okay, now tell them you're going to hold the phone up and I'm going to pray. And they might feel something like fire or heat burning go through their body. The power of God's going to touch them. Okay. Now, okay. And then, now, okay, now say, okay, we're going to hold up the telephone now. Everyone's going to hold up the phone. And I want everyone here in Toronto to pray with me for the power of God to touch these people on the other end of the telephone right now. Ready? Let's all pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for the angelic realm to be released right now in divine supernatural intervention. I command in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every spirit of cancer, every deaf and dumb spirit, spirit of infirmity, every demon of affliction, chronic pain, arthritis, right now, MS, MS, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Father, release your power. Let it expand.
explode into the cities. Let it explode into the nations. Let it explode out into the streets of Toronto. In the name of Jesus, I break and rebuke the power of sickness, spirit of infirmity. Go! Chronic pain, go! Fibromyalgia, go! Cancer, go! Blindness, go! Deafness, go! Heart condition, be healed! Lung condition, be healed! Healing coming into your stomach right now! In the name of Jesus, we release the healing anointing! Release it now! Release it now! Now ask them to do something they couldn't do. Tell them to begin to move their bodies. Ask them to do something they couldn't do. Ask them if they can feel anything happening. Ask them what's happening. What are you feeling? What are you feeling? Ask them if, any, if the pain is gone. Find out if anything's happening right now. Okay? Does anybody have a testimony? Something's happening right now. They're, the power of God's touching them on the other end. I want you to wave at me like this. Okay? Come running up here very quickly. If something's happened, they're being healed. The pain is gone. Something's happened. Come up here very quickly. Line up on my right. Line up on my right. Over here on my right. Over here on my right. If, they, if there's a testimony, something's happening. Some, they felt the power of God. They can do something they couldn't do. The pain is gone. Come line up on my right. Come line up on my right. This is not for prayer. This is only for those that felt the power of God and healing is happening. Something is happening right now. Their, their eyesight was healed, their ears opening up, they can do something they couldn't do, they're getting out of the wheelchair, I mean, they're breathing normal, I mean, something's happening right now. Okay, let's get them all up here on, on my right here, quickly. Oh, Holy Ghost, this is only the first wave, we're not done, we're going to start entering into this realm of authority right now. Listen, if you believe there's a healing anointing here, call up somebody else. Just keep going. Just keep ringing the phone. Tell them what's happening. Share the testimonies of what's happening. Tell them to log on to the internet and watch the meeting. Call the sick and say, log on, because I'm going to pray for people in, in the internet world in a minute. Okay. Where are some of my guys that can help screen them and interview them? I want to know what, what all the, I want to know what they all are. Okay, I want to, what, so what, I want to know each condition. Okay, anybody else? Something's happening on the other end of the phone right now. This is not for prayer. These are testimonies right now. Testimonies only right now. Okay, so let's get one more person up here that can help interview them and find out what's happened. Okay, bring them up here, Victor. Okay, what's happened here? There was a lady, she was in a car accident, and she hasn't been able to stand up, and now she's standing. How long has she not been able to stand? How long have you been like that, Joyce? How long? Two years. Two years. Now give me the phone. Joyce, you had a car accident two years ago? You couldn't stand up on your feet? Were you in pain? What was wrong? What could... What? The nerves. Were you paralyzed? Partly? The nerve ending. So you couldn't even stand up because the nerves in your legs were damaged in the car accident. What's happened right now? Are the nerves alive? Can you move your legs? Okay. Walk around. Start walking. You're walking? Okay. Could you walk like this before? You're walking now, Joyce. It's starting. There it is. The nerves are coming alive in your legs. Okay, put your hand on your neck right now. I release the power of God into your neck. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Power of God. Can you feel anything? When we started praying, did you feel something, Joyce? The power of the Holy Spirit. Where do you live? Where are you? Near London, okay. And God's healing you right now. You haven't been able to use your legs and stand up like this for two years from an accident. And the nerves were damaged. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's healing happening. She couldn't stand up for two years and move her legs. The nerves in her legs from a car accident two years ago. So something's happening there right now. What's happening here? Uh, 18, 18 years ago, his father was in a, car, a motorcycle accident. And, his, and he crushed his spine. He hasn't been able to walk without two canes. The pain's gone. And he's walking without two canes. Did you hear this? 18 years ago, 
hold on, hold on. I'm going to interview this. 18 years ago, he crushed his spine, and he hasn't been able to walk without pain, and he's had to use two canes. They took his left hip, they took his left hip to replace his spine, and um, so he's had the two canes. He also had constant stomach pain and swelling and bloating, and he's feeling great. Is he walking now? He's walking right now. Is the pain gone? Hello, is the pain gone? You don't got no pain and you're walking right now? Okay, keep moving around. Keep moving around. Okay, for 18 years you've had pain and you had to use two canes. Is that right? 18 years. Where are the two canes now? Are you using the two canes? They're by your bed. You left them there. Good. That's, you can leave them on the wall. Now start moving around. Start bending over now. Okay, you're bending over? Could you, could you bend over before? You had to hold on to something. You can do it now? Did you feel something go through your body? What are you feeling? It's jumping. 18 years, God's restoring your spine tonight in Jesus' name. Take that. That's all right. That's all right. He's excited. 18 years. I mean, what, how much glory can you give God? That's a real testimony right now. My goodness. Hallelujah. What's happening here, Dad? Two years ago, her friend was in an accident. She's been in chronic pain. The pain's completely gone. Your sister? In New Zealand. In New Zealand. Hello? Are you in New Zealand? And you had a car accident. And so you've been in chronic pain for how many years? Since 1995. What happened right now when we prayed? Did, did you feel something? What happened to your body when, when God touched you? What just happened when the phone rang? What happened? You just started crying. And now move around. Do something you couldn't do. Start moving your body. I want you to do it. You haven't done it since 1995. Do it right now. 1994, okay. <laughs> okay. Can you do it now? Is the pain all gone? Okay, move around. Leap around. Dance before the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. All the way in New Zealand. God bless you. Hallelujah. Say hi. She's still on the phone in New Zealand. Well, I'm telling you, my friend, that's three accidents in a row. On the internet. This lady here, her sister and brother-in-law have both been healed over the phone just now. What do you mean? What was wrong with them? My sister's ear has been completely blocked. She's supposed to have surgery in January. and she Surgery in her ear in January? Yeah, and then my brother-in-law, both his shoulder have been frozen and his back, and he's due for hernery, hernia surgery, but he's totally pain-free and he's shaking. And Can he move his shoulder now? He can totally move his frozen shoulder. I guess he won't need the hernia operation. Is that pain gone? Yeah, he says it's gone. It's gone. And the woman that needed the surgery on her ear, is she hearing? Yes. Susan can hear, right? Yeah. Let me talk to her. Susan, what did you feel when your ear was opened? What happened? A, a sharp pain? And then the ear popped open. And then you could hear. You were supposed to have a surgery in January. Man, where are you at? Where are you at? Where do you live? Beaverton. Is that Oregon? An hour and a half up north of Toronto. And God's opened your ear. Forget that surgery. And the guy with you with the frozen shoulder, is he healed? Oh, yeah. What's he doing? He's shaking like a leaf. An hour and a half away. And his frozen shoulder and his herniated disc is healed and that ear popped open. God bless you. Oh my goodness, we're starting to see a healing wave now. It's going to New Zealand. It's spreading around in Toronto. What's happened here? This lady's friend was watching on the internet saying, I hope my phone rings. And her phone rang and she hasn't been able to move her arm. And now her arm is movable. Wow! Come on! You're kidding! She's watching on the computer. I hope my phone rings. And then the phone rang. I hope my phone rings. I'm watching on the computer. Hey, listen, who's watching on the computer? You can send in an email right now if God's healing you over the computer. 
Now, what, what was wrong with your friend's arm? She, she, she stumbled and she fell and she hit her, her shoulder on this brick wall. How long ago? How long ago? I don't, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago or something, but she also has fibromyalgia. Everything needs to go. Everything needs to go. Go! Give me that telephone. Give me that telephone. Some of you are shaking your head trying to figure this out. Technology. Hello? Hey, where, where do you live? Where do you live? Canton, Ohio. Power of God's moving in Ohio. Now, now what, what's happening to you right now? What are you feeling? You, you weren't even able to move it before at all, your arm? Very little, very little. And it's moving now. Full mobility? You're moving it over your head now. Did you have fibromyalgia? It'll be gone. In Jesus' name! What are you feeling right now? The heat. That's good. Keep soaking up the anointing. What's happened here? His uncle has had arthritis in his legs and his elbows and hasn't been able to move them. They're both moving now. How long has he had the arthritis? Two years. Where does he live? Mozambique. He's in Mozambique. Mozambique? Can you speak with him? Give me the telephone. You're in Mozambique? Mozambique, Africa? And you've had arthritis for two years. What are you feeling right now? What's happening right now? Is it leaving? Yeah, hallelujah. Lord, healing arthritis right now in Mozambique. Spirit of infirmity, arthritis, go! In Jesus' name, in this realm of authority, we're speaking the healing word from Toronto. Be healed in Mozambique. Take that telephone. My goodness. Call up somebody else. The anointing is moving. I'm telling you right now, the anointing is moving for creative miracles. It's already after 11 here. I don't know what time it is. Back home on the, where I live, it's only 8 o'clock. Call out the Vancouver. What's happened here? This young man's sister has been in pain in the stomach for five years. She figures she has an ulcer. The pain is completely gone. Where's your sister live? Canton, Ohio. Canton, Ohio? Another one from Canton, Ohio. Were you with the other one? No. What? Okay, you were. So you knew the other person from Canton, Ohio. Because I was going to say, man, two healings in the same city. <laughs> now, what's she feeling right now? She's laughing and crying. <laughs> laughing and crying. Is the pain gone? Yes, sir. It's all gone? <laughs> ah! Okay, what's happened here? For five years, her sister's had fibromyalgia, and just now, she has no pain left in her body. She's from Florida, and she feels heat all over her head. Five years of fibromyalgia. D did she have pain before? What happened to her? I told her to put the hand, uh, the hand on the head, and she said she was burning, you know, heat, you know, coming all over the body. The burning came all over her body, and five years of the pain of fibromyalgia instantly left. Give me this thing. Are you in Florida right now? Yeah, is the pain gone? Do something you couldn't do. Are you doing it now? No pain from fibromyalgia. Yep, all of it go right now. Spirit of infirmity, leave your body and never come back. Did you feel something go through your body? Hold on. Somebody's getting, the people are getting emotional. I like it. But you know what? If you run up and just jump on me, some of the guys around me will be like, what's that all about? So, okay, be totally healed in Jesus' name. Whose husband? Come here, come here, sir. Hey, come back here. Who's the husband of who? Who are you? Who are you? His brother-in-law. The brother-in-law. Are you pretty excited about this? Yeah. You want this anointing? Are you going to be hungry for the power of God? Because what you see happening here can be yours. Oh. <laughs> you love it. The young people are so hungry for the power of God. They really want this anointing. What's happening here? I have a, 
I have a friend who's a Muslim. She works and volunteers in the kitchen at Highfield. And she took off because her husband is dying of cancer. And uh, when I called her and I says, you've got to hear this. There's a healing evangelist here. And I said, put your phone by your husband. And he's talking about Jesus <laughs> healing. And I said, could you ask him how he feels? And he says, he's feeling better. But the phone died. <laughs> She's got her Muslim friend on the telephone. And her husband has cancer. And they went and brought the telephone. Get another telephone. And phone that couple back up. Somebody got an extra cell phone around here. We want to call. call. Here we go. Call them back up. Right there. The cell phones are moving. So a Muslim right now is feeling the power of God. Let's believe God to heal that husband's cancer. That will save the whole family. All right. Now what's happened here, Dad? Her friend had prostate cancer and some other diseases. And he believes in Jesus. And he feels fire all over his body right now. Prostate cancer. We pray for it to be totally healed. There not to be one trace of prostate cancer left. Get him to check his body and go into the bathroom, whatever. But God's healing prostate cancer right now. We're going to decle declare that. Look at this line. Are these all testimonies? These are all people that have been healed? All of them? This a word of knowledge? A pacemaker. Wait, he's in a wheelchair right now? Yes. Hey, sir, what's happening to you? God is on you right now. Can you get out of your wheelchair and try to move around? Get out of your wheelchair right now. You're out of the wheelchair? Okay, start walking. I strengthen your body. I rebuke the pain. I strengthen your body. I rebuke the pain. What's happening? What's happening? You're standing up. You're moving around. You're not in the wheelchair? How long have you been in that wheelchair? Years? Six years? Years. Could you move around like this before? You couldn't move around like this before. Is the pain gone? Whoo! Okay, lift your hands up. Lift both hands up. I'm going to pray for you right now. Here we go. Ready? It's building. Hold on. Boom! Did you feel that? What, what, what happened? Energy just entered into your body. Want some more? Hold on. Boom! Oh! Okay, move around now. Move around. You're moving now. You're out of the wheelchair. You want to talk to this? Who wants? You want to mess around a little bit and talk to this lady? So you're getting out of her wheelchair and moving around. Yeah, hear it for yourself. I mean, we're not making this up. I'll let, hear it for yourself. Okay, this is the, the man. What, what's happening here? Hi, what's happening? Your husband has cancer? Okay, okay, put, put your hand on your husband's forehead. I'm going to pray for the healing anointing. Okay? Okay. In Jesus' name, I command that cancer and that condition in the blood, go! Yeah, what speaker? Is there speaker phones on all these? Let's turn on the speaker phones. Yeah, if you have a speaker phone, turn your speaker phone on. Yeah, but I know you have a speakerphone, but I need one here. <laughs> Turn on the speakerphone. No, I don't see it. Okay, lay, lay hands on your husband's forehead right now. Okay, we release healing right now in Jesus' name to your husband. Jesus will heal him. Jesus will step into the room and touch him and heal blood disorder right now in Jesus' name. There we go. Holy Spirit, come. Pray, pray saints. Pray, saints, for this dear family right now, this husband to be healed of blood disorder and cancer right now. We command it to go. Okay, find out what's happening. Find out. Is there a testimony? Yes. My, my son, who was in, a, he was in an accident um, 15, 16 years ago, a brain injury, and he's been in a wheelchair, and he can walk a little bit with a cane. But he got up out of bed when I called him, and he walked five or six feet. 
Then he turned around and walked five or six feet back the other way. We've been at this church for 15 years. He's, John and Carol know him well. Lord is touching him right now. Is he feeling anything? Yeah, um, he's feeling the place where he was injured on his brain. He said he feels it buzzing. And this is incredible. All kinds of people that have been paralyzed and in wheelchairs are being healed. Give me this telephone. Can you, are you walking more than you used to? Oh, yes, you are. Okay, how many years have you been in that wheelchair? 15 years. Okay, okay. Put your hand on that part of your head that was damaged in that accident. There's something happening here, too. Okay, I just come back. People are getting out of wheelchairs. This is wheelchair night, Steve, Long, wherever you are. I'm telling you, it's happening. I command right now that whole part of your brain to be recreated in Jesus Christ's name. Be recreated, that whole part of your brain in Jesus Christ's name. Every nerve ending, every muscle, until you're totally healed in Jesus Christ's name. Okay, can you move around now? Keep trying to move around. Keep receiving. We just release healing, more healing, more healing, more healing, more healing, more healing in Jesus' name. Keep asking them what's happening there. Keep working with them. Okay, here. This is that couple, that, the Muslim couple. He wants to give his heart to Jesus right now on the phone. All right, are you there, sir? Are you there? All right. Listen. Do you believe that Jesus is touching you tonight? Do you believe that? Yeah, Jesus is the one healing you tonight. You believe that? You will be, yeah, you can be totally healed. Do you want to ask Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior? Will you, will you pray with me? Okay, let's pray together, out loud. Pray with me, okay? Say, close your eyes. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to be born again. I want to be saved. I want to be healed. I want to know you, Jesus. I give my life to you. Be my Savior. Forgive me of my sin. And from this day forward, from this day forward, I will follow Jesus alone. I will follow Jesus alone. Okay, close your eyes. I'm going to pray for you now. The Holy Ghost coming and living inside of you right now. Here he is, the Holy Ghost coming and living inside of you right now. I release that anointing and rebuke your cancer in Jesus Christ's name. Receive healing. Can you feel that? What's it feel like? You feel really strong now. The strength is coming back into your body. Jesus will forgive your sin and heal your disease. God bless you. I'm going to keep praying for you. We're going to keep praying for you here in Toronto. Right, guys? All right. Muslim man felt the power of God come into his room, touch his body. His, he immediately took on strength, and he wanted to give his life to Jesus. Over the telephone. Listen, who are all these people? Look at the line down here of testimonies. How many of these can we hear? I mean, how, do you, are you excited about the kingdom breaking in? <laughs> what happened here? Her mother's been, I believe it was two years, deaf in her right ear, and now she got her hearing back. What happened? Um, my mother's Jewish, but she doesn't believe in Jesus, and her, but her ear just got healed. <laughs> You're kidding me. Give me the phone. How you doing? You're beautiful. Listen, hey, I've never been to Israel. I'm going in a couple of weeks. Do you think I'll have a good time? I can't wait. Hey, listen, how many years were you deaf in that ear? What just happened? Can you hear right now? Clear? Okay, put it on the other side. Can you hear me there? Is it clearing? Is it hearing like the other ear? Yeah, it is. Okay, close your eyes. I'm going to pray for the presence of Jesus, the Messiah that's healing your ear. Okay. 
No, I'm going to pray for him to touch you. You don't have to pray. Let me just pray, okay? Okay, close your eyes. And I just release to you the presence of the Lord. He loves you so much. I know you believe in the presence of God. The, the glory of the ark of his presence just coming right now in the form of Jesus touching you and rebuking and commanding all deafness to be gone. He's the one that's going to open up. He's opening up that ear right now. And we release healing. Rebuke all deafness in Jesus' name. Release that presence. All right? God bless you. Thank you for letting us pray for you. And your ear is going to keep hearing in Jesus' name. All deafness. Go! Power of God touch you all night long. Isn't that one of them? I'm a Jew that doesn't believe in Jesus that's opening my deaf ear. <laughs> Too much. Okay, guys, we can't do all the testimony. So let, let's go over there and just, you, some of my team can just pick out five or six of the, the ones that you think are like, they're all important, but I can't do them all. So, I mean, what's happened here? This was a word of knowledge that you had for Robert and Melinda earlier. And her, her father is Robert and her sister is Melinda. Her father right now has fire going through his stomach and he had cancer there. That was a word of knowledge we called out. He had his liver. He had cancer in his liver, and he was supposed to go get a port in for chemo Friday. And I was like, Lord, put in his heart what he, what he really wants. He didn't go. Listen, give me this phone. How you doing? Hey, are you on speakerphone? Hello? 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 So what's happening right now? What's happening right now? What can you feel? What's happening? Hello, is this, is this you, Reverend? Yeah, we're here right now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you good. Okay, what happened? What, what's happening right now? Oh, I, I'm warm. Wherever I'm, I'm touching my, my, my chest, I'm warm. Is that where the cancer was? Yes, uh-huh. Do you know that I called, I called your daughter out because the Lord spoke to me your name in my hotel room? Do you know that? Is that right? That's right, and, 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 I, and your daughter here, or whoever this young lady is, stood in the gap, and I commanded divine interna uh, intervention from heaven. The Lord told me there was cancer. He's bringing healing. Well, that's great, Reverend. Thank you. Okay, close your eyes, and let me just continue to bless you right now. Okay. All from Ohio. Same city. Same city. What's happened here? Another cancer in Ohio? Get up here right now. Are you with them? Another cancer in Canton, Ohio? That's like the fourth one from the same city. I command every trace of cancer in your body. Go! In Jesus' name. Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay, Robert. Here, talk to Robert. Listen. And let me tell you something. I just remembered the word of the Lord I had two years ago at Bill's church. I called out a whole thing about Ohio. God told me there was coming a healing outpouring to Ohio. And the healing revival in Ohio is connected to William Branham and the whole thing that went on in the Ohio River. There's a healing revival going to Ohio. Hey, what's happening to you? You've had cancer? Can you hear me? Hello? See if they're still there. Find out what happened. He's here? Hey, Neb? What's happened to you, Ned? What's happened? You can feel something moving. How long have you had this cancer? Okay, we command that cancer to be gone right now. You'll have to get it tested. You'll have to get it tested. But I believe Jesus can heal that cancer. That thing that's moving in your body is probably just a, a, you know, a spirit. But that's okay. Spirit of cancer, go! <laughs> okay? <laughs> What's happening now? Did you feel that? Well, there it is. There it is. Be totally loosed in Jesus' name. Okay, what happened here? Her mother basically, by the sounds of got a complete overhaul. Her back, her legs, her knees, her arms. I think she got an overhaul. Where's your mother at right now? Orlando, uh, Florida. Orlando, Florida. And, and what was wrong with your mom? She had osteoporosis, arthritis in her back. She had back surgery. She hurt. What couldn't she do? She couldn't bend without being in pain. She couldn't lift her leg. Don't no, no, bend and lift her leg. She did that already. She healed? She got better, and it went to her knee. We prayed for her knee. She got better, it went, and she said her bones were hurting. That got better. So Is all the pain gone? Is all the pain gone? Completely gone. Are you there? Yes. 
is all the pain gone? She said all the pain's gone. Mom? Hey, Mom. Do you believe that Jesus can heal you right now? You know where we are right now? We're in Toronto. You're, you're in Orlando. Did you feel the power of God go through your body? You're in Georgetown. Did you feel the power of God go through your body? Did you feel something go through your body? What's it feel like? Like heat. There it is. Every infirmity. Go! There you are. Be totally healed in Jesus' mighty name. Be totally loosed. Take that. And what's happened here? My friend in Ohio, she's had between 30 to 40 um, operations on her body, total hip replacements, knee replacements. She just had a leg amputated six months ago. She said she's feeling heat in her entire body. She had back pain, and she said the back pain's completely gone. She's believing for her leg to be grown out now. Well, Lord, give her a new leg. Pray for that. A new leg to grow in right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we release that. We pray for a new leg to grow in, and all your infirmity, go right now. In Jesus' name. Are, are these testimonies? Oh, yeah. Holding their phones up in faith. How, how many ministry team people here are in faith that you can pray for these people? Come up here and grab a telephone. Come on. Come up here, ministry team, grab a telephone. And pray right now. Start rebuking sickness on these telephones right now. What was wrong with them? Uh, I'm calling from the Philippines. Uh, here we are in the Philippines right now. What's happening in the Philippines? One third of my liver, my dad's liver is just functioning. So dad's getting a healing in his liver right now in the Philippines. What's he feeling? Uh, he, has been, he has been so weak. But now he said he feels energized. <laughs> Give me this. He doesn't speak English. Hey, listen. Understand. You don't have to speak English. Holy Ghost, boom. <laughs> Heal that liver all the way in the Philippines. We release the anointing. Come on, release the anointing for the Philippines. Whoa! Release the anointing for the Philippines. Hallelujah. All right. Be totally healed, Dad. <laughs> Isn't that wild? You know, in a moment, I'm going to pray for miracles in this building. The same thing will happen in this building. Same thing. God's building faith right now. Look at... Look at all the blue people. They're ready to go. Anybody got a telephone? Right over here. Give somebody the telephone. What's happening here? You got a word of knowledge yesterday for Maria. And uh, she believes this is what the healing is for right now on the phone. What happened? Um, I just called her and she said that she usually has pain from her ovary cyst. From Kent cyst. And then she said 7.30 or 8, the pain stopped. So now she's painting her room and she's got la hands laying on her mom because she's got lymphonia and leukemia to... Something's going on with the cysts. The power of God touched her at 7.30, 8 o'clock. She's had cysts in her bodies. And since God started healing her, she's been now praying in her room. And now they're praying for somebody else. She's what? She's painting her room because she doesn't have any faces. No pain. So she's painting her room. It's like Peter, mother-in-law, gets healed, gets up, and immediately serves them. How about that? Just get healed and start painting the room. All the pain's gone. I'm just going to start painting the room. What happened here? My friend Dottie from California, she's uh, fear-based disorder. She's been suffering and being at home really locked in her house for months, never left the house because of fear. When the prayer came, she said this, the, uh, the pain started leaving. It was shooting down her back and her legs. It started leaving immediately. The anointing came on her. She's feeling the heat. And uh, now we're just ready for the full We release that full-on breakthrough in Jesus' name, spirit of fear and torment. Go! Hey, listen. Stretch forth your hand for those watching the, on the computer right now. Huh? God, we pray for those on the internet. That you release your healing power right now. Spirit of infirmity, go right now. Over the internet, the power of God being released. Rebuking sickness, rebuking infirmity, rebuking pain right now. The internet... That's right, be healed through that computer screen in Jesus Christ's name. We release the power of God all over the world by the internet. Rebuking infirmity, rebuking affliction, rebuking cancer, rebuking tumors. The internet airwaves carrying the power of God. The internet airwaves right now. Carrying the power of God.
All right. If you are in this building tonight and you have a deaf ear, a blind eye, a cancer, chronic pain, arthritis, maybe you have a crutch, maybe you have a stroke, whatever it is, stand up wherever you are in the auditorium. There's a lot of angelic activity here tonight. Angels are on assignment going all over the world right now because of the healing decrees, the healing decrees. Now just forget about everyone around you for a moment. Really focus just on the presence of the Lord. And in your heart, give him all the glory tonight. Give Jesus all the glory. I want you to give the Lord thanks for what he's doing right now. In your heart, right now. Just love on Jesus for what he's doing. Only Jesus. He's awesome. We get to be a part of his great works. It's such an honor to be a part of his great works. And we give you all the glory, Lord, and all the thanks. Now, some of you in this building have already begun to feel fire, heat, burning, electricity. Something's moving in your body. Maybe the pain is gone or it's leaving. But right now, as we just enter into a place of engaging the presence of the Lord, we're engaging the Lord. We're saying, Jesus, that you would walk through this place. We ask for the hem of your garment over this meeting. God, I pray for the kingdom of God, for heaven to break into this room. Father, we take authority in the name of Jesus over every spirit, every demonic power of infirmity. And I command you, Satan, in Jesus Christ's name, Spirit of death, spirit of cancer, come out of that body now. My God, I ask for deaf ears to be open right now, ringing in the ears to be healed right now. I ask for cataracts and blindness to be healed right now. I ask for cancers and tumors to be healed right now. I ask for those that have a problem in their body, in their muscles, in their nerves to be healed right now. Heart condition, lung condition, in your stomach right now, in your neck right now, in your back right now. Spirit of infirmity, spirit of affliction, fibromyalgia, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, every demonic power of sickness in the name of Jesus. Devil, let that body go. Lord, like a mighty river, an anointing of healing beginning to flow. Like a mighty river, touching your stomach, touching your heart. Ulcers be healed. Irritable bowel syndrome be healed. In the name of Jesus, blindness go. You deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, deaf and dumb spirit, go. Deafness be healed. Ringing in the ears be healed. 20 years, ringing in the ears be healed. Those ears opening up right now, hearing being restored right now. That deaf ear being opened right now in Jesus' name. Okay, move your body. Try to do something you couldn't do before. Do something in faith. Take some action. Do something you couldn't do before. See if the pain is gone. Frozen shoulders be loosed right now. Bones and joints be loosed right now. Brain disorders be healed right now. In Jesus' name. See if the tumor is gone. A woman's being healed of a breast tumor or a breast cancer right now. The tumor is shrinking in your body right now. Okay. How many of you, you can do something now you couldn't do. The pain is gone. How many of you, the power of God's moving through your body. Something's happening right now. Wave at me like this. Okay. Wave at me like this. Here, I want to clear out this side of that platform area. Quickly, just clear this part out right here. If God is touching you in a physical way, healing's already happening. You can do something you couldn't do. God's touching you right now, and you believe you're receiving or you've already received healing. Come down here very quickly to the left side of the platform. Come right now, quickly. The power of God's moving in your body. 
Something's happening. Come down here very quickly on my left. On my left. If you can breathe, somebody's lungs are being healed tonight. Your breathing is being healed. Chronic asthma, go. Chronic asthma being healed right now. A, a liver disease, a gallbladder being healed. A kidney stones, kidney stones being healed. Bleeding in the kidneys, bleeding in the bladder being healed. Come to my left, on my left. Here's another great testimony. They said I need to hear this one. What's happening? This lady's husband's a paraplegic. He's been a paraplegic for 15 years, and he's feeling fire and heat all over his body. A paraplegic from the neck down? No, waist down. The waist down. Where are you at right now? New York. And you have, what are you feeling right now? Your, your legs, try moving your legs. Holy Ghost, restore this man's legs tonight. Father, I pray for this, this body that's been paralyzed for 15 years to be healed right now. Every nerve ending. There we go. Can you feel any sensation in your legs? A very intense burning coming into those legs. Could you feel anything before? Okay, lift up both your hands and I command your spinal cord to be recreated and the power of God to come into your legs to command the sensations in your legs, your nerves to be healed. Okay, try moving your legs now. Feel your legs now. See if there's any sensation coming now. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is the healer. Let the angel of the Lord go to New York. Let the angel of the Lord go all the way to New York and touch this man. Can you feel anything, sir? Okay, you can feel that now when you squeeze your thighs. Sensations coming back then a little bit. There we go. I keep releasing it. More, Lord. More. Restore those legs. Okay, power of God still working in you. Keep trying to move your toes. Try to wiggle your toes. Okay, but in your thighs, it's going to move down your legs. Okay, now your right knee is twitching. Try to move your right knee. 15 years paralyzed from the waist down. The right knee is starting to twitch. The thighs are squeezing. Come on, try moving now. Try moving that right knee now. There we go. In Jesus' name. The fire of God going through all your nerve endings, causing your legs to come alive. Try wiggling your toes. That we release, we pray for the angel of the Lord to go all the way to New York. Oh, we grab your legs right now. We just lay hold of them uh, right there. What are you feeling now? Okay, good. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to give you back to Pam. Let's keep hearing what's happening here, Pam. Something's happening, quadriplegic, 15 years, but his thighs are beginning to squeeze, his right knees are beginning to twitch, and he's got intense burning coming through his legs all the way in New York. God can do it. With men it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. Now listen, remember tomorrow morning I'm going to lay hands on everybody. So we're going to have an anointing service. But oh man, it's, it's, we're rocking here tonight. What was I doing now? Oh yeah. Testimonies. How many of these people, there's healing testimonies right now. Let's move some of them up here. Look at the line of testimonies over here. We're having a good time. Hey, we just get to stand back and watch what Jesus does. I just get to be the guy that holds the mic and goes, wow. And just has God wow me again and again. That's the nature of God. He takes so much delight and pleasure in giving us the kingdom. Okay, what, what's happened here to you? What's your name? Christine. What's happening, Christine? I've been believing God for years to heal my eyes, cataracts and glaucoma. And when you said cataracts, my eyes started going like this, like vibrating in the socket. How long have you had the cataracts? About 15 years. And your eyesight changing? Is it clearing? It's like crystal. Woo! Crystal. Hallelujah. 
15 years, glaucoma and cataract, her eyeball started vibrating in the socket. And I think she was going to say crystal clear, but she fell under the power. God removing cataracts, hallelujah, right here in the building. I mean, maybe you are skeptical when it's on the telephone, okay? You can't see the person, blah, 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 blah. But now these are testimonies happening right now in the building. I'll tell you what, there's a healing swirl right now in this building. There's a healing swirl. Get in it. Get in the healing swirl. Um, uh, Camila, what's happening? Fibromyalgia for 10 years and severe, since I was a little girl. Se- 10 years. So were you in pain? Tremendous. Tremendous pain from fibromyalgia for 10 years. And what happened tonight? I, I, when you were on the phone, I went to the gentleman who was up here and I asked him to please pray for me because the pain was unbearable. And they laid hands on you? Right in that corner there. And you got healed in the corner? Yes. Did you feel it come off you? I did. I did. Never have fibromyalgia again. Boom, ba. Ten years was in tremendous pain. So much pain she couldn't wait for prayer. She grabbed somebody else and said, pray for me. I can't bear the pain and God healed her. 90% deaf in his left ear. His hearing is almost back complete normal. He looks pretty excited. Where are you from, sir? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. What, what's happening to you right now? God is opening up my ear. How many years have you had deafness in that ear? It's just been worse and worse for years. And, you, and it's, it's opening. Did you, fe- did, you feel, did, you, did you feel a sensation? I didn't. But, but when, I, when I started walking, my wife was whispering to me. She's saying, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And I'm saying, how loud are you talking? And she said, go up. <laughs> and it's opening more since you've been up here. Ah, ah, ah. I'm a little unorthodox, by the way, in how I do ministry. If it offends you, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. What's your name? What's happening to you? I feel electricity and fire all over my vein. What was wrong with your body? I have hepatitis B virus active in my vein. Doctors say there's no cure. No cure for what? Hepatitis B virus. A virus. But you feel electricity coursing through her veins. Yeah, and I feel God touching my liver as well. Well, you know what? Jesus has a cure for hepatitis. Boomba. <laughs> what happened to you? I fell about two months ago and hurt my shoulder. Get, can I have a little more up here on the monitor? Just a little bit. Your shoulder. Yeah. What couldn't you do? I couldn't move it properly. And I was standing there and something just moved. Is it good now? <laughs> yes. Oops. <laughs> How you doing? Well, good. Depression. I've been healed from depression. I've had it all my life. And I've been coming here for nine years. So please, God, I want joy. You look pretty happy. Well, I want more. I could fix that. Close your eyes. Say, Holy Ghost, I want a big drink from the river called Joy. I want the Holy Ghost wine tonight. Wine. Now put your head back, open your mouth, and drink. Oh, all right. Oh, bam. Oh, have a little more. Open. Oh, put your head back, open your mouth, drink. Oh, be baptized in His love. Shubalabala. I. Uh, 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 uh. Pick her up, Victor. This lady's get she had depression. I don't know how many years. Does this look like the face of the depressed? How you doing now? I don't know. You feeling good? You want another drink? Yeah, yeah, I want. <laughs> Just a minute. What happened here? I turned up the volume in this ear. How, how, much, how long did you have deafness in this ear? About 16 years ago, I worked construction with an 18-inch radial arm, sir. 16 years ago, you started losing hearing? I believe that's when the damage was done. And it, it's opening tonight? Louder. Clearing up. What's happened? You prayed about... Um, 
women that have been abused or been locked up? Well, for two months, I've been alone locked up with the Lord. And you came and uh, Pastor John and Carol and some other leaders in the spirit into my room. And the Lord was going in really deep in my heart and, and dealing with abuse issues. And um, I was suffering from getting attacked by a spirit of suicide. And um, I was locked in a room when I was a child. Um, you getting a release tonight? I'm getting, to, I'm getting so free. I've been like and violated and, ab and abducted and all kinds. All the stuff I called out. All the stuff you called out has broken off my spinal cord. And I'm telling you, the pain that I felt in my body is like, there's, Do you love this? There's nothing there anymore. Your spinal cord's totally healed? My spinal cord is getting healed. Because of all the abuse, that was the connection. Oh, yes, that was the connection in the mind and all that stuff. And I want to say something else. Your, your CDs about going into the other realms and stuff saved me. Because the Lord, when you came into, this, when you came into my room in the spirit, God has... says I came into a room in the spirit came into my room in the spirit the Lord Lord used you to save me because I was going I was so tormented from all the stuff what happened was I put your testimony on of all the stuff that you've been through and when the Lord so, um, would take you into the spirit and have you where you were where you would be mute he's been doing that to me now for the last two months let me pray that he gives you more and more and more and more and more of that soaking and that glory and take that's pretty good stuff. What happened here? Put your hand on my head. Three weeks ago, I had a tumor removed from my brain the size of a tangerine. And the doctor didn't remove it all. When he told me that, I was excited because I thought, you know what? They think they're God. No, no, it's the scar up there. Can you feel it? Ten I feel that now. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. a scar there. Well, yeah, three weeks ago, I had that taken off, and they left a little bit because there was an embedded sinus, and I was excited because I thought, this is what God wants to do to show the doctors that they weren't God, that he is. And tonight, he told me he was going to dissolve the rest of it. I felt in tremendous heat when I was standing there, and you were praying, and I know it's gone. I'm going for an MRI at the end of the month. Write me. Send me an email when it's gone, and let the guys know here when they find nothing from that MRI because God dissolved the rest of the tumor. Hallelujah! Now look, you can see the anointing over here. Do you love to see the power of God touching people? It's awesome. What, what's happening? I just got healed of... She got healed of... Scoliosis. Scoliosis. Now, you know, scoliosis is a curvature in the spine. Now, how do you know the Lord, how do you know the Lord's healing scoliosis in your back? I felt all my bones cracking and I can feel the difference in my back. Whoa. You felt the bones cracking? Yes, sir. And you feel straighter now? Yes, sir. Take that anointing. Shaba bikada balamondo. What happened? My eyes are clearing up. I can focus better. So your eyesight's clearing? It's clearing, yes. Take your glasses off for a minute. Can you see now? I can see. It's clearer than what it was. I just so you feel like there's a healing happening in your eyes? Yes. Whoa. Boom. Take that. <laughs> Anybody else got any real wild miracles on the cell phones going on? That's crazy. Bring them up and have some ministry team. These young people, sick them on them. Put them right over here. Keep bringing up those testimonies. What's happened here? Well, I've, I've, um, I took my hearing aids out. How many hearing aids? Do you have two? Two, yeah. I put them in my purse. And what happened? Well, I can hear better. I can hear from behind me now. So your hearing aids are in your purse. You're hearing better. How long did you have this deafness? Well, it's come on me over a long period of time, but I wore the hearing aids about three, four years. Three, four years, and in faith, you took the hearing aids out, and you're hearing more clearly now. Yes. I'm, I'm going to pray you'll never put those hearing aids back in. Wouldn't that be nice? Took the hearing aids out in faith. God honored that, and she's hearing. Now we're just praying she'll never put those hearing aids back in. Well, you know what? You need to believe God for better health when you're 50. 
Just all the way out, guys. All the way out, healing till the day you go to heaven. Just all the way out. What happened here? What's your name? Moldy. Molly. <laughs> Where are you from, Molly? Whoa. Where are you from? Columbia, Missouri. Missouri. And what's happening? For seven years, I've... <sighs> I've been in extreme pain, insomnia, fatigue, and I want to... I have four small children, and I want to come back a new mommy for them. <laughs> You hear that? I want to go back home and new mommy for my children. Living in all this pain for all these years. Is God touching you right now? Do you feel something tonight? Molly, listen. God will hear the cry of your heart for your kids and heal your body tonight in Jesus Christ's name. Oh! Oh! Infirmity? Go! Make her a brand new mommy. <laughs> she, had, she had dots in her vision and she had pain all over her body and now the pain so the eyesight had some kind of a, I have a like a stigma in the eye like a black spot black spot it's like and the spots are gone now when I, yeah, when I see white things yeah I had and you had pain in your body for how long whole body um, maybe two years for two years I don't know is the pain gone now yeah all gone you like that? Yeah, yeah. Close your eyes for a sec. Boop. Boop, boop. <laughs> Lay hands on yourself. A hundred percent hearing? Tony Ryder's being healed. Of, got a hundred percent hearing on the telephone here. Hey, what's happening, Tony? Are you being healed? I can hear you gro I can hear you groaning. <laughs> and now you're laughing. Are you hearing clearly? Oh, you go to this church, Tony Ryder does. And he's claiming a hundred percent. Is it a hundred percent? A hundred percent? Uh-huh. Okay, a hundred percent hearing. All deafness be gone and never come back to Tony's ears. Ah! I'm telling you, it's exploding here, Tony. I mean, it's, they're going bananas. Uh. <laughs> it's midnight and the place is just rocking. See you later. Be totally healed. <laughs> I love healing explosions. New Zealand, Philippines, the United States, an hour and a half away. People getting out of wheelchairs. That's a good, that's a good meeting. What's happening to you? Um, I felt the fire guy like all over my body and then you said, and then you called out like breast tumors and lumps and so I ran back to the bathroom and then, because I had a tumor, it was shaped like this, but now this is gone and all the pain is gone, but I want this part gone too. <laughs> so you've already got some healing from the tumor that I called out. You ran back to the bathroom to check in faith. God dissolved the rest of that tumor. She's already been back there to check and there's healing already of a tumor in the breast. Now we're just praying, God, dissolve all the rest. You check another check in the bathroom, you come back in the morning totally healed. What happened? I had terrible uh, arthritic pain at the top of my legs when I came here. Oh, and it's gone now. How long have you had this arthritis? Well, I've had it. It's been increasingly worse, but today and yesterday were terrible, and it's gone now. Whoa! Generational curse of arthritis be totally broken. Never have it again. Something's happening to you, huh? What happened? Whoa, whoa. I'm... Whoa, the problem with manifestations is people like eat the mics all the time. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> what was wrong? A lot of things, but um, whoa, whoa. I've had chronic whoa, fatigue for a lot of years, and the biggest thing is whoa. Since I was 12 years old, I've had a, a knee condition, and um, for quite some years, I haven't been able to do like knee. Do it now. You got to hold on to me. Oh, oh, oh. How's that? Since you were 12 years old, you've had this problem in her knees. It's a kind of a chronic pain thing. Whoa, whoa. It was, I had Oshkid Slatter's disease and just like all kinds of surgery and just a bunch of stuff. All kinds of surgery. Well, the Lord's good. He likes to heal bodies. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
We love working in the anointing, Lord. Thank you for the anointing. How you doing? It's pretty good. What's happening? Um, I, I had ovarian cysts on the endometriosis. I had a surgery in September, but uh, the B ultrasound um, last week came back, still some left. So you had these cysts. And what just happened now? Yeah, just uh, when you prayed, I just feel very hot, and my body was curling. And so it's like I feel a little bit released here. Uh, Let, put your hands there. We just bless what the Lord's doing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. Um, 20 years ago, I had a, I had a, a tubal ligation ever since then. I had problems with kidney stones and urinary tract infections. I called that out. Yeah. This morning, I woke up. I had so much pain. I couldn't bend, and I couldn't jump or anything. And while I was sitting there, I, I, the Lord said to me, are you ready to receive a healing? I said, yes. And, and I was jumping and I can... So kidneys. He said, remember I called out the word of knowledge for the infections in the kidneys and the urine and all that. Power of God. She had it so bad this morning in pain. But you felt something go through your body tonight? It, it, it just, I just... It's gone. I jumped and I... The you jumped and the pain left. In the kidneys. Huh. That's God. Have a little more. <laughs> Ooh, glory. It's, it's getting hard to walk now. I've been under this anointing for a few hours now. It's getting hard to walk. Hey, come over here. <laughs> Whoa, what's your name? Kari. Kari? Yes. What's wrong, Kari? Uh, well, nothing is wrong anymore, but... <laughs> what was wrong? Uh, I had arthritis in three different places because of accidents. Uh, so accidents, yeah. arthritis in three areas. Yes. A major one was in my neck. I had an accident when I was seven years old. And You've had arthritis develop in your neck since an accident when you were seven? Yes. And it's been bothering my, my uh, arm. And, and you came in tonight in pain? I came in, my, my shoulder was like that because I was so tense. And after my husband and another guy prayed for me, I'm fine. You're fine. And uh, I also was my knee. And, and later, when, we, when you asked us to come out for um, the nations, yeah. when I wasn't even praying for healing, when I came back down, it was gone. Of course it is. You need to be healed before you can go to the nations, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's your name? Genevieve. Jenny? Genevieve. 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 By the way, if you need to go and go to bed so you can be refreshed for the morning, I, I release you. I'm going to just take a couple more testimonies and then I'm going to be done for tonight. But I'm going to lay hands on um, everyone. Does Bill want to share something? Okay. Doors open at 8.30 tomorrow morning. 10.30. Okay. 10 o'clock. Come on up here, Bill. What's that? Right now? I I'm ready. Did you want to do something? Yeah. Yeah, I I'll just bless these last two people here, and, 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 we're, and, and we're done for now. The other testimonies can write them out on the pink forms. <laughs> yeah. What, Geneva, what happened to you? I've had double scoliosis since I was a young teenager. Double scoliosis. And did God heal you tonight? A lot of pain. I had extreme heat on my face, and then I felt one vertebrae pop. You felt the vertebrae pop? One. one. Just one. God popped the other vertebrae. In Jesus' mighty name. This will be his testimony. Give the Lord a mighty shout of praise for all the miracles. Ruthie, <laughs> what's happening? Um, I was working in Tibet uh, for about two years. In Tibet? Yeah. And the last month before I left, I had uh, injured my, sho my shoulder here, the rib. And um, it's been hurting for the last two years. And about, I'd say about 90% of the pain has gone at this point. Lord, thank you. Restore her shoulder. Were you serving the Lord in Tibet? God, she was serving you in Tibet. Now I pray that you totally, miraculously heal this shoulder in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Is this going to be okay, John, now? In Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 
our wonderful friend, Bill Johnson. Uh, all right, I, I need to ask you to do something. I know there's a lot of folks walking around. There's incredible excitement in the air. We have some leaving. If I could ask everybody to sit for a couple minutes, please, before you leave, please. I need to share one thing with you. It'll take me a few minutes. And if we could have everyone find your places. I, I realize that's an awkward thing to do. If you're down on the floor up here, you just stay where you are. I realize we've had a number of folks already leave, but I need to talk to the ones that are still here. This evening has very strong prophetic significance that you need to know about and we need to respond to. So I need to ask everyone, please, to find your places. If there are folks being ministered to, as soon as we're through with what we're about to do, you can go back to that. Okay, if I could have... Yeah, as many as possible. Just sit down. Just please, just give me a couple minutes. <laughs> David, is, David is missing his phone. So whoever... Whoever's calling Finland with his phone, please return it. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just go ahead and sit down, please. I, I, I can only share this briefly and, and once. How many of you know who Bob Jones is? Many of you, most of you know who Bob Jones is. Very well respected prophet of the Lord. I had a dream two nights ago and I was very provoked and stirred because of this dream and felt I needed to call Bob because he's amazing in interpreting dreams. I had a dream, some of it was personal, about an inheritance and because of this inheritance a man said, you can buy this house if you would like. And I said, well, how much is it? And he said, Toronto. As though the word Toronto represented a sum of money. It's very strange. You know how dreams work. You understand certain things. He said, Toronto. But I had a puzzled look on my face, so he said, $1.1 million. And the dream ended. I was sharing with... Uh, uh, with Todd yesterday about this and Stuart was sitting close by and he said the number 1.1 million dollars I thought it was maybe just something for me I didn't know what to do with it I was sharing talking with Todd and Stuart was listening he said you know 1.1 million dollars is a significant figure for this church because there's something going on with selling of property reducing mortgage and they're going to end up with something around 1.1 million dollars in debt I immediately flashed back to an experience I had two years ago this past October. This experience probably won't make sense to anybody except the audible voice of the Lord will. I kept running into the number 555. Uh, uh, anybody have weird things like that happen? Finally, after a hundred times, you go, Lord, are you speaking? You know, have you called me? And I woke up, I was in Minnesota, and I woke up at 5.55, wide awake, and I saw 5.55, and I said, okay, God, what is this? And immediately, I went to sleep, and it was, it, was like, it was like God knocked me out. Literally, I just was asleep, and I was probably asleep for three minutes. But I was asleep, and in that experience, the Lord spoke audibly to me, and he said, the anointing for the day of the cancellation of debt is upon you. Now, you know, Jubilee, number 50, Jubilee is the cancellation of debt. I don't understand how 555 fits into that. I can't tell you everything that Bob Jones explained to me because it would take me too long and I'm still swimming in it, but I got the prophetic sense that God was declaring something in this season right now. He told me, he said, he said, Toronto is about to have another a second wave that is going to break loose. And he told me, 555, five, five, when God repeats a number three times, once he's saying, this is what I'm going to do, twice means get ready, three means it's now. 
suddenly these, these you know, I, you just have to trust, man, it's these unique prophetic experiences over the last couple of years seem to come to a peak tonight. I called Bob and I said, Bob, explain these. Help me with these things. And I told him, talk, we were yesterday praying in the back room here and I saw a scroll open up. And I still don't get all of this, but I saw a scroll open up, writings in Hebrew, honey dripping, and the honey turned to money. Now, this... I don't know if I can do this justice. I'm a little bit frazzled, but I hope you can go with me on this. The Lord, I, I talking with Bob, he spoke to me, he says, God's offering you a chance to buy this home. What he's talking about is through the covenant relationship that we have as people, we are going to take, I feel like I am to take responsibility for the debt that's on this house. 1.1 million. I believe that something is to happen tonight. What Todd did tonight broke something loose that I believe prophetically is the opening of a portal and the release of the next wave of the move of God that is absolutely going to go off the charts from anything we've seen to this point. Something, do you understand that something was released tonight? I mean, more than just an encouraging feeling. Something significant. Bob told me this. He said there were two movements in the 1900s. And he said the two houses that I inherited had to do with the raw power of God that was demonstrated in the early 1900s. And he said that is what God is wanting to release again. And he said specifically the early 1900s, not just the 50s. He said there was greater power in the early 1900s with Mariah Wood, with Edder, and with uh, John G. Lake. And, and yeah, and he was saying that the power that was demonstrated at that time was greater than even the healing revival of the 50s. And he's, he's been prophesying God is about to release the measure of power that happened in the early 1900s. So I'm on the phone with him telling these prophetic experiences, these dreams, and it, I don't know how to explain this to you, but I feel like that I, I'm giving my honorarium from this conference because I feel like I've got to do something to sow into this debt on this house because there's a release of, of a move of God. You can't buy favor from God, but there are prophetic actions that release the resource of heaven. God has taken the honey that we have gotten this week from the Word, and He's going to release resource in supernatural measure. God is about to take the church from the realm of sowing and reaping, where we get what we deserve because of obedience, to the realm of blessing, where we get what He deserved because of what He accomplished. And it's a superior measure of truth. It's a superior measure of blessing. And I don't know anything else to do except say... Do something unreasonable and let's attack the dead on this house because I believe the anointing that was released tonight, there is something that is supposed to happen. I, this wasn't put upon me. I asked if I could do this. Um, I don't even belong to the, 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 the network that they have. This is something that I feel like we have ownership in. Our lives have been affected all over the world, especially North America, but all over the world because of what these folks have hosted and given place to and have been determined to pour their lives into. This place amazes me. Every time I come, I'm stunned by what I see. And I feel like there's this partnership, a spiritual partnership of people that God has put together. What Todd did tonight, what has been released this week in teaching, something has been opening moment after moment in the heavenlies. And I feel like something got rocked tonight. I, we were reading over at the youth meeting tonight where, where uh, um, Jonathan and his armor bearer look at the Philistine army and Jonathan looks at him and he says, I think we can take them. Two guys. And they crawl up on this hill and the fear of God hits so much that the earth itself shook. That's what I feel about tonight. I feel like we're in the beginning stages of an absolute new wave. It's not that the old one is over. It's like they're running in groups. There's groups of waves. And this thing is going to have realms and demonstrations of power that are beyond anything we've ever known or seen. How many of you saw stuff tonight that's beyond anything you've ever seen before? I'm, I'm telling you, this, <laughs> are you ready to be stretched some more? I was in a meeting similar to this with Mahesh Shavda in Spokane. 
the Spiritual Hunger Conference. How many of you were, was anybody at that? Few of you were there? We did something just like actually Mahesh did. It was a different anointing, a different purpose, but he did what I'm about to do. And he said, we need to sow radically into this ministry. And somebody put in a $1 million check that didn't bounce. <laughs> I, I, feel like, I, I, I feel like God's put an anointing for some reason that the anointing for the day of the cancellation of debt, I've been carrying it for two years wondering what it was for. And this week it came to the surface. The anointing for the day of the cancellation of debt is upon you. I have to do something. Listen. In Acts 9, the Gentile was acknowledged for giving. And it says, your alms have come up before God as a memorial. It has triggered his memory to your activity. And his giving into God's house brought God to his house. Now, I know what my folks at home would be doing right now if I got this far. They'd be begging me to shut up so they could give. We've had a number of these prophetic experiences through the years, none this important. Never, I've never seen a moment this important. Not with, not with finances. But there's something that I believe is about to break loose, and I'm going to encourage you. Enter into a supernatural realm of generosity. I want us to sow into this house, and I want us to stand together with John and Carol in this incredible team and say, this is the day of the cancellation of debt. We will partner with you. We will partner with you. That's, that's what I wanted to do. You're going to have to want to do this. I had to be the first. <laughs> I'm telling you there's breakthrough in this stuff. This is as holy a moment as anything that's happened tonight because I believe it's orchestrated by God. Do something significant, please. Not just cash on hand. Do something significant. If you're able to do a check or even an envelope where you can use a credit card, don't go into debt for this. But if you're able to pay it off, please, let's just do something crazy. I mean, let's just, let's do something unreasonable. I don't know if I explained it very well. When Bob said you have the opportunity to buy a house... He said, prophetically, God was referring to an anointing of the 1900s that would be released through this financial act. I just believe that there's an anointing. I want you to do this. I want you to pray right now. Everybody in the room, even those that are walking up front, I want you to pray, God, release the new day on this house. Release the new day on this house. Pray, God, release the new day. That which has been opened tonight in the heavenlies over this place, let it multiply, let it increase. Let it multiply, let it increase. New measure of demonstrations of power, demonstrations of glory. Bless you for doing this. This is, this is uh, I feel like, is an incredible moment. We, we really need some folks that will partner in faith. 
if, if you are unable to do something now, but you're able to later, then write your name, address, phone number, and what you can do. I really mean this. We've got to take this thing seriously. I feel like God is opening something up that we get to sow into. And uh, I, this is not something I can miss. Don't forget David's cell phone. Whoever's got that cell phone, we need that thing back. You got to call it. Oh, did you? Okay, join with me in something, would you? As you bring your gifts forward, as you sit there, prophesy with me the cancellation of debt of this house, will you? I feel like we just need to somehow, we've done, we're, we're doing the giving thing right now, but we somehow need to just, we just need to prophesy the multiplication of income and resource and the cancellation of debt. We prophesy that this is the day of the cancellation of debt. Work above and beyond all that we can do in natural resource. We call for the blessing of the Lord that is based on what Jesus has done for us. We call for that into this house. That that area, the issue of money for uh, buildings, facilities will never be an issue again on this house. So we prophesy the fulfillment of that word. We're saying, yes, God, we're buying into the movement of the last days where there are increased power. We want to buy the house, God. We want to buy the house, that realm of anointing that changes and transforms history. We make agreement on that together in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen, amen, amen. <laughs> the Lord a great shout of thanks for a wonderful night tonight. Oh, what a Savior you are, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that healing anointing went out all over the world. People, do you realize that miracles were happening in the Philippines, in South Africa, in New Zealand, all over North America? I mean, it was just an amazing, amazing thing. Go excited, will you? And we'll see you in the morning. Have a wonderful night. And turn to somebody near you and pray over them and say, More in Jesus' name.
Folks, one more quick little thing. As you're going out, could you pick up water bottles, Kleenex, anything that's near your chair, and just find one of the trash bins? That will save us like two hours of work. If uh, you're able just to pick up the uh, water bottles, the trash by your chair, put it into a trash bin, that would be wonderful. Nine, sorry, 8.30, the doors are opening tomorrow morning, 8.30. At 8.45, if you'd like to join intercession at the back area. And at 10 o'clock, we start the main session. Change from what is in the printed schedule, if you didn't hear it. Todd is going to be doing an impartation time in the morning at the 10 o'clock meeting. Carol is going to do her session in the afternoon. And Charles is on schedule, as the program says, for the evening meeting. Bless you. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful evening. Actually, it's already the new day. So, Father, bless our new day. Give us a great day as we come back later on. Amen.